on Searcy. Bringing you love, peace, and soul. How you like me now? Friday, we always got a little soul for you in the noon hour. XL Primetime, ready to crank it out. There's a little soul. There's some good food here where the neighborhood meets. Players Grill Mandarin, San Jose Boulevard. We'd love to see you drop on by. Uh, I know this place was full of hoop fans last night as they were watching Sweet 16 basketball. First night where you start to trim it from 16 down to 8. We know who our winners are from last night. We're going to look forward to tonight breaking down those games. And you got some Jaguar news that we definitely will dig into. But let's start with the pickles, okay? I just I knew it. As soon as I, as soon as I saw Cersei grab the menu, you were ordering them fried pickles. I love, you love them. them. Absolutely, <laughs> I love them. You, it, it, you know, it's uh, it's a vegetable, so I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to eat. I love right, that, but it, you know, got a little. Got it's a, little, a vegetable. I love that part of it. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's just got a little trans fat around it. It's That's a, it's all. A, <laughs> It's a cucumber <laughs> soaked in, in, in vinegar and then in doused in fat and there grease and. Love that, uh-huh. love that. Some good salty vinegar taste, though. Just oh, nothing yeah. wrong with a little fat. Oh, it is, man. Yeah. Listen, you need yeah. some fat in your life. Yeah. Well, and I, also, I we you. need the pickles today, Joe, because yeah. we can't eat meat today on Good yeah. Friday. Yes, so exactly. I actually was excited to see the mott sticks, the fried pickles here at Players Grill. Uh, there are potato skins, but I, we'll, I have, we'll, we'll be good little Catholics in yeah. reserve. No, no, there's oh. bacon Stepping on those over. potato skins, so you guys yeah. aren't having those. No, either. that's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. That's yeah. all for you. <laughs> that you yeah. can enjoy. Is that on Awaken 180? Are we, are we in the clear? No, it's potatoes. No. Are, but I mean, I'm on I'm on uh, maintenance right now anyway. Oh, yeah. oh really? Maintenance. Yeah. What does that actually mean? Maintenance. What does that mean? You, you did just have a banana. Put a few more calories it means, in. It means, you know, you can't go back to being a fat bleep. That's oh, basically what oh it yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I'm never going back. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I, I know what it feels like. <laughs> Some people that don't know what it feels like, I know what it feels like. I'm never going back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But every once in a while, you can indulge. You can have a little fun. Uh, that's for sure. I, I went to uh, listen to Dewey Villa last night right there along the beautiful Sebastian River, and, and the food trucks were out, and mm. I got – some empanadas that were nice. more. Oh, nice. Yeah, but, but trust me on this. No These bueno. were Venezuelan empanadas, oh. and they were more greased than anything else. Oh, so it sucks. just – so those – like, I don't know what's going on. The difference between maybe a uh, an empanada that you're used to having, uh, Cuban style versus Venezuelan style. Anyway, it was not. Listen, go Jamaican style. The beef empanadas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the Jamaican restaurant uh-huh. are outstanding. Okay. All right. I'll have to put that uh, – I'll file that away. But we had a couple of other good items. But those mm-hmm. just kind of sat heavy in the stomach. So, but – as we have said during Lent, I usually eat worse on Friday because I'm not eating meat, but it's usually fried fish, fried <laughs> shrimp, fried something. So I, I don't mind it at all, that's for sure. All right, welcome in. So we got stuff to talk about. Let's Before we get to the hoop from last night, Foye Luacan, uh, and I, it's interesting the timing because they, I believe the Jaguars love this guy and the potential leadership which he showed this year. Remember, there was some infighting in the locker room. Mia, you can definitely speak to that because he was starting to point out that more work needed to be put in, and there was some resistance, and I think that was at about the time this defense unraveled. Bottom line is, Foya is seen as a tackling machine and a developing leader on the defensive side. I think it's a huge cosign from, and I tweeted this out, from new defense coordinator Ryan Nielsen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that this is – very much not planting your flag and saying, yep, we're on the right path. But I think this is Nielsen saying, yes, you have Chad Muma allegedly in the pipeline. Oh, you could just slide him in. Sure. No, this he is saying that I think Foyer fits the system. I think he's the right leader for this team. And certainly by lowering his cap number, Leon, he opens up some space for his buddy Josh Allen, in theory, to eventually get that long-term deal done. Oh, I mean, that's good. Absolutely good. I mean, I like the fact that he's taking it. Well, listen, I don't want to say taking a leadership role. Anytime you lead the, the, your team in tackles over the last couple of years, you're oh, automatically yeah. the leader on the team or whatever. And I think he fits. I, the one thing that was most discouraging to me for the last couple of years that Foyer Lulcon has been here is he never blitzed. Mm-hmm. I, I, he never Two blitzed. sacks last yeah, he, year on two blitzes. Exactly. He, he, I mean, utilize him. If he's a tackling machine, he, that means that he can get around linemen and backs if you use him in blitz-type situations. So, yes, Absolutely. And I think he understands the, the fact that Josh Allen right. is the face of the of the defensive side, even though he leads the team in tackles. That to make cap room for him to help him with his contract, he's a, he's going to be an added player. I get, I mean, I get that too. But let's also not. The reality is, they missed on Muma. If Muma hits, well, then he's your linebacker. Well, well, well. He's your linebacker. I think Simple there's also I think there's also something to be said. This will be more of a four three. Will it not? 
Doug yeah, Peterson be a, said as much earlier this week. Down. Yeah, so, right. Well, I mean, Moomin is Moomin's literally a Mike linebacker. He's that's his that's his spot. Well, he filled in for Devin Lloyd, did he not? A little no, bit more he did. Off-ball? But I'm saying he's he is a guy who he, he was coming out of college as a Mike linebacker. He's a guy that has the size of a Mike linebacker. He can right. run. So well, I, I mean, that I, I mean move, that's I, right. to me it just it, to me it screams. You missed on him. That's all. That well, so that move in the moment because you had just signed Foye Aluik in that same off season didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense because at the very least Foye was going to be here two years, and so then right. what? You're getting two, three years out of Chad Muma. That so that's where that didn't make sense in the moment. Look, there's the argument to be made. He was best player available. Injuries happen. Wait, go back. Best See, player. That's the problem yeah, right BPA. there. Best player well, that's available. the problem right there, Jojo. <laughs> no, no, right no. there. The, the difference is philosophically, that's what teams right. in, in draft war rooms will tell you. Right, but, but I get that. Okay. I totally and get that. And also, again, you saw last year Devin Lloyd misses two games when they go to London. Yeah, they didn't miss a beat. With and Muma by the way, in. by the go way, back. we're not saying BPO anymore. We're just saying BPO. Yeah. We're yeah. not but, saying that word. But go back. Go back to his first year. Devin Lloyd was lost, so Chad Muma had a place to 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 be on the field then. But again, best player available should happen especially with the first pick you're making, okay, because there are only so many good ones that are going to be in the first round. So BPA mm-hmm. definitely lives and breathes. And, Thank you for But that. you don't go back-to-back back the same position and move <laughs> like Balky decided to do, trade up into the first round to get Devin Lloyd and then turn right well, around and go grab you another linebacker in the third round. So, so Moomin, At the same position. I so, mean, is it so possible Moomin, they were going to put Lloyd at outside backer, like at, like an actual rush end in an odd front? Well, he's – is it, I mean, is it possible they, they were thinking I that? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Mm. I mean, is Moomin, he's going to play the Sam, right? So Now he – He's going to play the Sam. He's going to be on the strong side of the tight end. I don't even know, you know if what? he is, man. I, I like is he a Sam? Side. I think you they're going to play 4 two, 5 I think they're playing 4 play two, 2 5, five? all the time. And what? And they'll, have, and they'll have nickel, dime, Savage, okay, but, and Antonio yeah. Johnson kind of flip-flopping. And then when they need when they need to stop the run, they're going to bring another D tackling. Dave Campbell was talking about this Yeah, the five guys up the 5-2 defense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it, it's a look. Uh, more than anything else, I do think dude represents responsible leadership. I'm prepared. I know the game plan. I know what I got to do. And guess what? I'm going to go do it. Okay, he doesn't talk about it. He just goes and does it. He knocks people down. And I do agree with you. When he did uh, get turned loose to rush the passer, he mm-hmm. was successful. He was. And I just think Nielsen's going to be able to, based on what we've seen, he's going to be able to script and draw up some different looks to where you can send guys from different spots to go get the quarterback. And I like what Mia said about Foyer Lewicon, the fact that he made guys uncomfortable in the locker room who weren't putting in the effort yes. and the time on the field and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm good with that. I'm absolutely – listen, you can call me out all you want as long as you're doing your job. If yep. you see something I'm not doing well, if, if you're doing your job, then call me And out. he was the first guy, yeah. I believe, to challenge them. So, just to recap, for those of you who are wondering what exactly we're talking about, there were a couple different moments, most notably in this one, several fans actually brought it to our attention because I was in the press box in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it on the broadcast and on the field that there was a disagreement between the then Jaguars defensive coaches and some players with Foye Lewican among those players who was involved in that heated conversation, let's say, which came on the heels of, something I witnessed during open locker room in which some of the younger players were questioned by Foye Lewican about their effort during practice. Mm-hmm. And again, this is week 18. In the moment, Leon, we spoke about it. We said, where was this week 10 when things were good? Yeah. But at the same time, I, I would like to believe that he was holding guys well, accountable then. Yeah. That's but how I, I look at it. Well, right. He, I, I would like to think kinda, he was because that's the demeanor he carries well, in that locker room. Yeah. But I do think that's where – I go back, and again, I don't want to speak for Foye. I don't want to speak for any of the guys in that locker room. But the fact that Doug Peterson was a half hour late to his intro, to his end of the year press conference because mm-hmm. he was finishing up player meetings, and he said to us, "I just finished those player meetings. I now know what I've I know what the problems <laughs> are. I know what I have to do." And well. and it felt like. From what Doug said, he spoke to players. And, again, I'm not saying it was Foye. I'm not yeah. saying who it was. But he spoke to those defensive leaders and said yeah. this is what was happening. But you know what You know what that sounds like, though? That sounds like someone pulling their parachute too late. Should have been pulled a long couple weeks before. <laughs> that <does. laughs> it sounds it's, like somebody who's like 100 feet from the ground and goes, oh. oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that should have been done like four or five weeks in advance. But I can appreciate the fact that it was brought to your attention. Okay, well, so the fact I, that you had leaders like Foye, and so maybe right. Doug thought, they will overcome these issues with the coaching staff, mm-hmm. and obviously that was not the case. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, well, now I mean to cut you off, Joe, real quick. The, the reason why maybe Foyer Lokon had an issue with the defensive side because he's a middle linebacker, 
hey, look, middle linebackers don't like to get touched. So that means the guys that probably the guys that were in front of him weren't getting yep. it done. Correct. That's what he Correct. was mad, yeah, mad the, at. The other Correct. thing I was going to lean on you for, and and this even came up with with a couple of the other discussions that we've had coming out of those owners' meetings with what Doug had to say, is that he, I don't know if I'll get over it. Basically, mm-hmm. that losing streak. Anyway, bottom line is, is that you know when the when the wick gets turned up. Okay, and it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't need to come at the last game of the season. I no, think that's a great no. way to put it. But you, he sh- they should have recognized some of these ills way before that. Listen, all the coaching staffs that I've been under, whether it had been Coward or Bill C- or, or Tom Coughlin, mm-hmm. once, you, once you eat your Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> no, for real, Thanksgiving, yeah, is, great time Thanksgiving is right about the time, right. you know, that the coaching staff okay, go enjoy your families, this, this, and that. When, when this is over, it's – it's about the realness of the – that's when – not saying we prepare for the playoffs, but we know to turn the temperature up after yeah. Thanksgiving. So because you, you got to play your best ball at that those those particular weeks if you yeah. want to make the playoffs. I, 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 and I've you, never missed the playoffs yeah. when we took that type of approach. When you digest the yams that's and it. the stuffing and, and the turkey, yeah, exactly. then it's time to digest sauce, that's right. uh, that you got to get ready. to. It's right you about gotta, Thanksgiving time. You you basically got to get on, on the fast lane. And the reason why point. I say that but when I say Thanksgiving is because you by that time you want to be able to put yourself in a position to where you're one of the higher seeds. Mm-hmm. You're either one, two, or three or whatever. So then you know that in the month of December is going to be your best ball. You gotta have to play your best ball. That's gonna ride you into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hey, that's it more than anything else. All right, so you guys, let us know six four one ten ten. You can hit the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosures uh, because I do view Foyer as a leader, <clears throat> and if he fits in with what Ryan Nielsen's planning to do, I think that's all but good. So let us know what you think about that restructuring, and then to Mia's point, the idea of creating some more cash. Maybe the urgency is starting to at least be there for, for Balky to get that deal done, have a happy Josh Allen coming in for the entire OTA, mini camps, all that type of stuff. Uh, don't look now, but, mm-hmm. Matt, whenever you talk about April 15th and just how crazy it's going to be as far as the transfer portal opening back up. And oh, I thought be, you were talking about tax day, yeah, but continue. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the transfer portal opening up is going to be nuts that day. That's the first day that the Jags get to go to work, okay? And so that's going to be a big deal, okay? That is going to be tax day, okay? You're going to say, hey, it's time to come in and start putting your work in. We're going to well, tax you. It, it's not only time to get put to work, it's also time for, for these guys to all look at each other. And again, Leon's talked about this over and over. There's mm-hmm. got to be somebody that stands up in that locker room and yeah. says, look, what happened last year, it's just unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's unacceptable for you to be 8-3 and three and not make the playoffs. Right. So it's got they've got to work not only on the field, but I think they've got to work with – who and what they are in the locker room? Do they not? They do. The chemistry is going to be very important. I mean, because now you got the, you look at all the different guys that you brought in through free agency. They've got to be able to coexist. And I don't really think the team has a culture. I, I think they just kind of fly by night. They got to create a culture there. Mm-hmm. Fly gotta, by night is not a good way I, to go in the NFL. I'm just telling you, though. I don't think they have a culture. That's the one thing they they've got to establish a culture. Mm-hmm. So they they got to, the Jaguars got to be able to stand for something uh, or whatever. When, when it was when I was when I was with the Ravens. When you walked in the hall, it says, play like a Raven. Yeah. They had just won the Super Bowl. That meant something. They, they had, they, I'm not saying they don't need any corny term or whatever, but I think they just need to establish some kind of coach in that locker room, in that weight room, in that film room, and on that football field to where they say, listen, this is who we, we're going to be, right. and we're going to live and die by it. All right, so let's pair it up with what he said after the interviews yeah. with the players, and he said, I know what i got to do now, and then he bounced basically all of the defensive staff talking about Doug Peterson, mm-hmm. and then pair that up with what he said at the owners' meetings when he basically said the Eric Armsteads, the Darbys, the Savages, the Morse, the uh, Gabe, all on playoff teams, mm-hmm. we needed that. And that's why I do think it wasn't an, necessarily an edict or an order to Trent Baalke, but he said, damn it, we need to get some guys with playoff experience that know how to win, that know how to prepare themselves. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that have been in the fire, that when things aren't going good, yeah. how Handle do you right the ship? Not just mm-hmm. when you're in the postseason and yep. things aren't going good and you're down 27 nothing of the Chargers, but when you're losing three, four games in a row and it feels like you're slip, like everything is slipping away. And so that's where I go back to Eric Armstead's mm-hmm. introductory Zoom from two weeks ago. I think he mentioned something, did he not, about I see the talent here in Jacksonville. Yeah. I know it didn't end the way it wanted to, but that's mm-hmm. why I want to come here and lead. Didn't he say, he said yeah. something? I believe so, that. yeah. yeah. We, we might be able to find the um, The other thing that, that was interesting with, with Eric Armstead's uh, podcast that he sat down and, and did uh, mm-hmm. was, I think it came out yesterday, maybe whatever, late late the night before. Anyway, it did 
draw headlines in San Francisco and here. Uh, and Eric Armstead's one of the guys that they're obviously looking at as a leader. And we're talking about big differences in dollars. And San Francisco was going to try and play hardball with him mm-hmm. and basically say, hey, we love you, bro. And, and you know the feeling for this, Leon. Mm-hmm. We love you, bro, but you're about to give us a major discount to come back. And they did the classic line, hey, you've been a Niner this entire time. I want you to finish your career as a Niner. But here's a measly $6 million, <laughs> and uh, you're going to have to live with that. So and anyway, maybe it'll go up to $8 million. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Now, which, mind you, yeah. that's less than Javon Kinlaw and Harrison Phillips. Thank you to John Shipley of Jaguar Report for doing yeah. the heavy lifting on that one. And Kinlaw has nowhere near performed to where, where, Armstead, where has. An Armstead has performed. Yeah, I've And he's younger, situation. but like still, Leon. It's Yeah, I, I, I've been in that situation before. I've never mentioned this before, but when I was my last year of my contract with the Jaguars, Jaguars told me I couldn't make more than Baselli. That's what they told me. <laughs> Bottom line, I said, really? Hmm. All right, let me find somebody else to the baby. Oh, all right. Now, listen, we are hanging. So the stories that we get is just awesome. All right, uh, but what was this? I, I, I can't remember the exact name that you referred to to Big Bo as. Now he's oh, you Oh, the firstborn. Yeah, yeah firstborn. There first you go. Born, first firstborn. <laughs> he was the uh, franchise maker, which was uh, – uh, the beginning of something special, that's for sure, right here in the city of Jacksonville. Uh, we love it. All right, 641-1010, you guys can jump in. You can hang out on YouTube with us. Just search Tents and XL. You can see a shot of us inside Players Grill Mandarin. Now, we're in the corner area where the stage is set up. And, by the way, they have got entertainment tonight. They've got entertainment, really, a bunch throughout the course of the week. And that's what you really want to enjoy all the time. When you come out here, you can expect great food. But then you're also going to be able to get tonight. Claire Vandiver, she plays at 8 p.m. And then the band Be Easy plays there, plays here next Friday night uh, at 8 p.m. So you're always going to have a stage with some music on it while you're enjoying some cold ones, some delicious food where the neighborhood meets. You can come on by this one that Phil and Megan have set up right here on San Jose Boulevard or the Miramar location, which is on Hendrix, or their Oak Leaf Plantation location. We're talking Players Grill Mandarin all over the First Coast. All right, let's get to some hoop last night because that's what – listen – I, 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 right now, the All Coast Conference, the Any Coast Conference, the All Craft Conference, they're, they're, they're hooping again, okay? Now, UNC went down to Alabama, Matt, which you predicted and I correctly have on my, uh, my office pool sheet, so I'm happy that Bama moves on. But I was still surprised they were able to get the job done. And then Clemson is sending a message, people. This is the first time they made it to the Elite Eight since 1980. Yeah. Alabama's – like I told you guys yesterday, they shoot. If they shoot well, they could beat any team in the country. Mm-hmm. And and well, can Grant, they can Grant they Nelson, defend and hold that team right, to less points? That's, that's that's certainly an issue. Uh, Grant Nelson's Grant been unbelievable. Unreal. Unbelievable. Um, they've got they got at one they can get five guys in the court that can shoot beyond the perimeter, and that's you stress a lot of defenses that way. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also a bad shooting that away and getting bounced, which everyone in the tournament is obviously. Mm-hmm. But I just think the fact that they have so many options right now as shooters. And they're also very long, so they can get rebounds. And Sears can get a shot whenever he wants yeah. oh, and, yeah. and stresses defenses like, you know what, man. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I love the way they're playing right now. Love it. And, by the way, Grant Nelson is the tallest national park ranger you have ever seen. He is a okay? national park ranger. He is, a nas- he is <coughs> over there with Smokey, mm-hmm. and he's doing PSAs about making sure you, you – you- By the way – you what take care was of your, he doing on that last? I mean, I know he blocked the shot. He did. He just the held last, it. He just put yeah. his arm but, up. But think about this. If he fouled him, that's three free throws. Yeah. Because it, that's technically a three-pointer. He was still far enough away, but you're right. Uh, but anyway, the dude had, what was the total? Three three blocks and 19 points in the, in the second Five half? Five blocks. Oh, yeah. Second no, half. The second three, half yeah, yeah. I believe it was 19 points yeah. and three blocks in the second half. He was doing some work, mm-hmm. and like you said, there are scores. But when you have defenders that pair up with that, and both of these teams, UNC and, 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 and Roll Tide, they like to roll. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, I, I came away impressed. Nate Oates has got them playing both ends of the floor at the right time. Uh, two things: one, uh, Nelson giving hope to another Dakota man who has recently moved to Tuscaloosa. I am, of course, referring to Kalen DeBoer, mm-hmm. um, that he you can indeed succeed even if you didn't have any, ex- any experience in the SEC. Previously, did order Nate Oates, by the way. That yeah. was a hotly qu- debated topic on X last night. I saw plenty of folks saying how 
Oh, people question Greg Byrne when he hired Nate Oates in 2019. This yeah. guy from Buffalo who's from the Midwest, he'd never been down south. I, I think at the time, Nate Oates was one of the up-and-coming coaches, and it was regarded as a pretty, yeah. It was a good hire. You know, yeah. it was a good hire, but yeah, not outside the box, I wouldn't say so because he had just taken Buffalo to the NCAA tournament. But the point I wanted to make, Nelson, mm-hmm. North Dakota State, yeah, Sears, Ohio University, and then Estrada, Aaron Estrada, St. Peter's, Oregon, yeah. Hofstra. That yeah. is wild. Mm. That is wild. The, the it's flying the portal, Dutchman. Man. It's, it's the flying portal. Dutchman deliver. I'll tell you what, too. Pringle was hobbling around the whole game. Mm-hmm. He played really well on, on Baycott. Yeah. Really, really well. And, and Baycott had, what was he, in the 19-point range? 19, something like but he that? was 8 of 18 from the field. Yeah. And, and, and look, let's just talk about the defense that you're starting to see a couple of these teams play, and Clemson would be one of them. Clemson. Caleb Love. Caleb Love was – I'm not going to say. He's always been feast or famine, though. That's who he is. I know, but at the same time, you can't go 0 for 9. He went 0 for 9 behind the three-point line. And we're talking about just I mean, so did R.J. Davis. Yeah, both of them. They said that it was a historic number, actually. (laughs) Everyone said that it was a collision course with those two players meeting up once more. And, um, well, it was a collision course of a different sort in Los Angeles. (laughs) Yeah. And so, look, I I give Clemson a lot of credit the way that they did play. Uh, A little bit of a fever pitch, and Arizona can get hot. Clemson controlled that game early. Arizona clawed their way back in it. This was feline on feline crime, what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I thought the Wildcats are going to figure it out late. I had them going to the four, of course, and it didn't happen. And so you got to credit. You got to credit Clemson and what they've been able to do. They, they, they got bigs that are making plays, Leon, and they got what do we always talk about is guard play. Guard they definitely play. have shooters. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I, I was watching. Listen, UConn, I, watch, I watched about four or five games. Mm-hmm. I don't like the fact that the games are like 20 minutes apart. Like you can't watch one good when they – you got to switch to another channel. Laptop, I, I don't bro. like Laptop that. Laptop and TV. Or just I ain't got two time TVs. I'm, out, I'm out amongst the people. I, I got well, ask well, the people that's even put easier two then. TVs yeah. on. Well, they, they, maybe they should have done that. But yeah. I'm watching UConn. Because right? you got four good games tonight, man. I know, and I don't want to miss any of them. Absolutely. So we, I'm watching UConn. UConn is the best team in the tournament. But the best team may not necessarily win the tournament. UConn, They're about to go up against They're, Illinois. Cause, because here's the thing. I haven't seen them stress yet. They're so good. Darren Chan is going to I don't. I haven't seen them stress. <laughs> I mean, they're long. They're physical. They crash the ball offensively, defensively. They switch well. They shoot well. They defend well. Sounds all good. And everybody was talking to I take UConn or the field. But I just want to see them in a situation where it's close down the stretch to see how they respond. See, it's everything the- they're doing is they wa- they are whitewashing everybody off the yeah. map. Yeah. Well, Dan Hurley said they have to because when they've been in close games, they've lost. And so that's why they now have an NCAA tournament and record. And they have – look, they have Creighton on the bottom of the bracket, and that's one of the teams that's been able to beat them. So right. we'll see whether – but I do think Illinois is going to honestly give them a hell of a test because no. uh, Iowa State, best D basically, best offense last night. What was it, a point and a half line? We all knew mm-hmm. it was going to be close. But Illinois has got a, a look about them. But last night against San Diego State, UConn did struggle in the first half they of did. this game. They really did for but a little while. But they found a way. Yeah, yeah they went. And um, that's, where, that's where they are a machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were down. And I, I mean, if only it was 4-2, and then they were only up a bucket or two. Yeah, once they inbounded the second half ball, it, they jumped to like a 10-point lead. Mm-hmm. But the other thing was they had, I think it was something in the neighborhood of 9 to 11 trips down the floor without a point. I don't know if you that's guys know this or not. doesn't do. But San Diego State hasn't been able to score points since last year. Yeah. So yeah. they really weren't stressed in that yeah. game. Yeah. No, they were stressed. Trust me. In the first I don't half know of that about game. that. I don't know in about that. In the first half of that game, they were. But look, they just had to figure it out. That yeah. Right. All. Exactly. Yeah. Which Both. again, that's what championship teams do. Yeah. By the way, and we talked about Creighton beating UConn. Mm-hmm. In that game, they they beat the hell out of that game. Okay. They beat them by se- seventeen. Which UConn was 19. coming off of having so, thumped Marquette, who was number four at the time. Right. Creighton was fourteen of twenty-eight from three in that game. Mm-hmm. Fourteen of twenty-eight. Yeah, Fifty. Fifty. UConn was three of sixteen from three in that game. Yeah, that's that's no point. Bueno. That tells <laughs> you how they won that game. And by the way, just take a look at Arizona's total from the three-point line last night against mm-hmm. Clemson. They they got they got. Well, uh, you have to give the Tigers. Yeah, but that's it. That's Arizona, though. Man. I know well, that is who Arizona but son is. Son of a yeah. gun, make some threes, Every man. Every Sweet Sixteen, man, they just. Gosh. Die. As we uh, get ready to take our first break of the day here at Players Grill, I would just like to note, and Leon, Matt, and I were talking about this before we came on the air. I felt like watching those games last night, outside of UConn seizing that second half and seizing the moment, mm-hmm. it felt like a game in which the team that lost lost the game. And that's with all due respect to Alabama, Clemson. For me, UNC, the forward who took that shot, the three-point shot, mm-hmm. with a minute to go, mm-hmm. two seconds off the shot clock, that's a mistake, so there's one. 
Iowa State 11 of 25 on bunnies, on layups, Leon. I have never seen there were an, so many close to the basket. Yeah. Shots I have never seen fall. an airballed alley oop yeah. until last night last in my one was life. Really bad. The last wow. one of the game, it cost him too. Yeah. Right, yeah. and so that's Literally why completely missed the rim. Everything missed everything. He just dropped it. He just straight up dropped the ball, and so that's why I am looking forward to tonight, which we will preview those games because I think I I, I hope to see a world in which teams are seizing the moment as opposed to which mm-hmm. listen that's how you sometimes got to play the game wait for your opponent to make a mistake i sure. felt like we saw a lot of mistakes last night all right we got plenty to get into uh we've got uh, pro days from yesterday how did michael Penix jr look how did drake may look how does that change the boards we'll get into all that coming up players grill mandarin on san jose boulevard drop on by enjoy one of their great lunch specials you can enjoy some cold ones they've got cold coronas the official Cerveza of Major League Baseball as it opened up yesterday uh, in earnest. So you can enjoy all the ball you want by hanging out here at Players Grill. You're riding in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios. XL Primetime on 1010XL. Live play-by-play sports were made for radio. Well, there is advertising worth the price of admission. And 1010XL was made for you. At Randy Marion Cadillac in Jacksonville, we have over 40 2024 all-electric Cadillac lyrics in stock. Take advantage today of two awesome incentives. First, a $7,500 rebate applied to the purchase price directly at sign. That's a $7,500 rebate with no need to wait for tax time. And second, a $1,500 credit for a high-speed in-home charger. Over $9,000 in savings. Now's the time to drive away in luxury in a brand new all-electric Cadillac lyric. Randy Marion Cadillac, Southside Boulevard, Jacksonville, plus tax tech title 899 admin fee and resist all. Tell them Jennifer sent ya. Top Dog Tavern is your gathering place for family and friends, offering something for everyone. Want a delicious meal served with a smile? We have you covered. Shareable appetizers, hot and crispy wings, juicy tavern burgers, fresh salads, plus a large craft beer selection. And there is nowhere better to watch all the big games than on our multiple TVs. Enjoy great food, cold drinks, and good times at Top Dog Tavern, located in Bartram Park off Old St. Augustine Road. It's tournament time, and Best Bet St. Augustine is your winning destination. This month, Best Bet St. Augustine has a full lineup of poker tournaments, featuring a $160 No Limit Hold'em, six-hour Ironman on Fridays, and weekly No Limit Hold'em tournaments with buy-ins ranging from $60 to $100. And don't miss the grand finale, our $300 No Limit Hold'em St. Augustine Championship on March 30th, with a jaw-dropping $30,000 guarantee. For more information, visit bestbetjacks.com. That's bestbetjacks.com. The most common form of treatment for the arthritic joints is normally cortisone injections and gel shots and over-the-counter medications. And most patients have tried all of that and are still in pain. Every day, Dr. Aaron Wolkoff, a QC Kinetics medical director, meets patients who have exhausted every method to get relief. They've been told surgery is their only option. They want to stay away from that path, and they come to us almost as a last hope. So we're using our own body's properties to help manage pain, to help slow arthritis down, keep the patients active with no downtime, and get them back to what they enjoy doing. I mean, I love what I do. QC Kinetics regenerative treatments from our board-certified providers help heal and restore aching joints. No surgery, harmful drugs, or downtime. Call for your free consultation today. QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. Share your voice anytime on the 1010XL text line. Are you serious? Installed by Lifetime Flooring. I gotta say, you're totally blowing my mind right now. If you can't call or email, text us. 641-1010. Divorce. Menonly.com. This is Kenny Lay of Kenny Lay & Associates. Our firm specializes in representing men in family law. That's all we do. That's our only focus. We can help with all of your family law needs, such as divorce, custody, alimony, and child support. For over a decade, we have helped thousands of men with these types of issues. We even have an appellate division ready to challenge a judge's ruling. If you need a family law attorney, go to DivorceMenOnly.com. DivorceMenOnly.com. Offices, Jacksonville. When you think about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Prime Roofing is Jacksonville's local contractor that manufactures, fabricates, and installs metal roofs. Schedule today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Picking here. You know at Zero Res, they love rugs. Fine oil rugs need to be cleaned with the right equipment and careful training. 
My guy at Zero Res, Gerard, is a certified master rug cleaner and has been cleaning rugs for more than five years. Don't trust your fine rugs to anyone. Call Zero Res right now. They are offering a BOGO on rug cleaning. Have Zero Res clean one rug, get a second rug for free. What a great time to get your rugs cleaned. Zero Res, man, spell it forward, spell it backwards. Zero Res, it's the right way to clean. Zero Res. AC's broke, it ain't no joke. Call Florida Home AC. Florida Home AC. Florida Home AC. Florida Home AC. FloridaHomeAC.com. Wondering what you're going to do for dinner tonight? Southern Steer Butcher is a full-service butcher, and we grind and make sausage in-house every day. Now open in Ortega. For tasty tips and juicy breasts, choose Southern Steer Butcher. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball presented by FIS opens today at 121 Financial Ballpark. Come early for the opening day street carnival and don't miss post-game fireworks. Tomorrow, the first 2,000 fans get a free t-shirt plus more fireworks. Then join us for Baptist Health Sunday Family Fun Day with a pre-game egg hunt. Tickets start at just 5 bucks. jackshrimp.com. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball, affordable, family fun. I-9 Sports wants to make sure kids all over the First Coast can enjoy growing up on a field or in a gym. And right now, summer and fall registration is open. So make sure you find out what I-9 Sports offers in your area across Duval, Clay, and St. John's. I-9sports.com. Enter 1010 in the promo code. Now that's what I call high-quality H2O. If you want high-quality water throughout your home, call your local water boy. We install equipment to solve any water problem. Water boy, J-A-X. Now guess who? Rockin' Jacksonville, Thursday, April 11th. American woman. Catch the Canadian Hitmakers live at Florida Theater. No Rock legends, the guess who's long-awaited return to Jacksonville. Get your tickets now at Florida Theater box office or floridatheater.com. No time for you. Don't miss a night of legendary rock classics with the Guess Who. Thursday, April 11th at Florida Theater. Produced by Elko Concerts. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah. Exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Oh, yes. We may be on the road, but you know how it goes, folks. We are still rocking your big hair, heavy metal Friday, live from Players Grill in Mandarin and JJ. Uh, let the people know a special opportunity that they could get in on, get in on some big hair, heavy metal action. Yeah, uh, not big hair or heavy metal today, but we have <laughs> but the Stone falls. Temple Pilots. Yes, giveaway. We're Stone Temple do this. Pilots sounds like big hair, though. No, it's grunge. It's I know. Grunge. It, yeah, exactly. We'll do this it's a few so. times today, but right now I have a <laughs> pair of tickets to see the Stone Temple Pilots at Daly's Place live August 30th. Tickets on sale, LiveNation.com. Be car number four right now at 641-1010. It's not really STP now anyway. So. You, hear, you, hear big, you hear Stone Temple Pilots and you don't think... Like, I don't think big hair. We know what the band tell me is. Heavy big metal? hair. I think of poison. I don't think of Stone Temple Pilots. But it, it does. It does go back to one of our original conversations. Right, the original when argument. We right. First, put out big hair, heavy metal, and it was uh, some of us. Some of us were thinking just because they had big hair meant they played big hair, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. And that was Maddie and I when we were arguing about Van Halen forever. We couldn't oh, quit yeah. arguing about it. <laughs> so what is Van Halen again to you, Matt? Bang. Rock and roll. Okay. Yeah. All right. uh, yeah. Listen, by the way, whenever we do introduce big hair, heavy metal, we accept Thank them you, all. Thank there you. it is. We accept them all. We just want your rock and roll that's suggestions. That's rock and roll, bro. That's, like, oh, yeah. that's like the windows down. You're going 75 What's the name to 45. That song that you just played? Panama. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Big hair. Yeah. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Good job. Yeah, you know, he told me that because, you know, he's got a little story with that. And that's, oh, really? It's a legendary story. What story? Well, hang on. Your buddy? Who went? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Never mind. He just he just said okay. All right, yeah. The Still look got on it. you when you got the look on the oh. face. Of, oh. uh, Panama <laughs> to me is Planet Rock. I'm still gonna write that song because that's what I thought it was. That. You-
Planet Rock. Planet Rock, which I still think is a great. That's a very title. Bianchiism, right there. Yeah, it, it, but it has it has potential. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to write it, uh, Planet Rock, because that's how I sang it when I was a kid. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, JJ, can you just quickly remind the nooners, since we have some on the text line wondering how to enter for those tickets? Uh, you just call. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there he's you so, go. He's so official. He's well, got all the information. Mean? Yeah, we, it's not yeah. a contest. Several- you just call. Right. Well, we have several people saying that their calls aren't going through. So oh. I guess well, we have lots of calls. Oh, yeah, oh there we true. go. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So we have two more pair. So keep listening right. as we go along. That's today. what I was more so yeah. looking for you to say, yeah. JJ. We yeah. have two more pairs that we will be giving out th- throughout and the duration of today's show. So you'll show. get a chance. So whenever we fire up some Stone Temple Pilots, it's not necessarily the cue to call. JJ will be the cue to call as far as when you can win them. 641. 10-10. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's get back to the Jaguar conversation and a couple of, uh, I, I think, good talking points when we're talking about where this team is going to go. We did our mock drafts yesterday. They extend Foye Luakon. Uh, you're starting to talk about what this defense is going to look like and where they're going to go, and we're still looking at all the possibilities, and our mocks have included edge rushers, cornerbacks, defensive interior linemen, all kinds of different possibilities on that side of the ball as far as where they may go. Now, when we start talking about who they got to defend, what did you guys think of Michael Penix and, and, and Drake May yesterday? Uh, I thought Drake May looked pretty dang good. Well, there's a lot of folks who I've even heard from some in South Florida today that, you know, and not, not anybody who works for a team. But some I was on a radio show down mm-hmm. there, and they were saying, you know, Michael Penix Jr., perhaps, Matt, has the best arm in the draft and proved it yesterday. Michael Penix? That's mm-hmm. what I was told this morning, that yeah. he heard could have the best arm in the draft. I can't even imagine that. He throws the best deep ball of anyone in the draft. I would definitely say that. I don't I don't There think are he's... those who I think believe that just because he ran well in the 40 that therefore he is cleared of those injuries and that he will be a mobile quarterback ran a despite four, five. Yeah, right, his, despite his, being more of a pocket passer at Washington. His yeah, his big negative is he's torn the, his ACL and his right knee twice in 5 years. Yeah. That's the big I mean that's if I don't know how you spend a first round pick much less a high first round pick on a quarterback that is Twenty ACL in his yeah, are you ready for this? And it's 24. Yeah. yeah, are you ready for this? Four straight seasons. And let's not also dis- – uh, let's not forget he's an older player, okay? Mm-hmm. So he's already up in age. So you've seen this guy uh, turn 24 right after uh, – he's going to be turning 24 right after the draft. Anyway, if you go back in time, 2018, torn right ACL. 2019, dislocated right shoulder. 2020, torn right ACL. 2020, separated AC joint in his left throwing shoulder. Those all add up, man. That's a lot of wear and tear on a body that if you're going to put first-round money in his lap, <laughs> yeah. you've got to be worried about it. I kind of agree with Matt on that. With all of those issues over the last, what, four to five years in his career, yeah. you can't spend the first Plus, he, on him. He's not also not like a guy that throws well against pressure either. He, but yeah, we saw in the game I against Michigan. I, I, I don't I, – I mean – I wouldn't spend a first-round pick on him. I'm not even sure I'd spend a second-round pick on him. But there are teams that – I was talking to Scott about him two days ago, actually. And and there are teams that have a, a day-one grade on him. Well, Kurt Warner yeah. just went on Pat McAfee and said, Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, excited to see them at the next level. I really like Michael Penix. And, quote, when you watch him on tape, he shows it time and time again. I mean, any concern that he's a lefty, too, in the D- league? Denny talked about that. He's talked about that a couple times with – because the le- at lefties, the ball comes out differently, mm-hmm. and it's it's not the same thing. And he just said there's just something odd about it as far as – But that's still – it, it is, it is, but, it, but I mean, it's, it's teams are still like a little – when you're talking about investing a high first-round pick, right. those things like that scare teams off. Well, they do. I, look, I, I dig it, but, but Tua – is working out pretty well. Right, down. but Tua consistently yeah, had exactly. In other words, season after season after season of really good seasons right, at Alabama. I, I, I guess the only reason I'm saying that is because this is a left, left-hander with a chip on his shoulder saying the left-hander, while it might be different or unique or whatever, but that's not the knock on him. It's all those injuries that are knock on that, mm-hmm. That's the Yeah, knock I on think him. that's the huge red flag with him is yeah. the injuries. I mean, yeah. it, it's I, like I said, I think he throws the best deep ball in college football this year. Real, like a really good deep ball throw. I don't know about – Second level throws, intermediate throws. Well, the He's definitely kinda, shaky. The on thing it. that impressed me a little bit, and this is we got to remind ourselves, all right? Mm-hmm. It's Pac-12 football. It's Pac-12 defenses that Bo Nix and DJ and Penix and all these guys were, for the most part, thriving against. But the thing is, is that when he went into that semifinal game, mm-hmm. he looked pretty dang good. Now in the championship game, he yeah. couldn't. He just well, didn't have any time. Well, you know, we had those same concerns about the Big Twelve. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, Patrick sure. Holmes and uh, Baker Mayfield. Sure, yeah. They're playing it's the true. defense and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, those those are pressing issues. I mean, I know that down here in the South we're, we're SEC oh, we're snobs, snobs man. <laughs> you know, but uh, there's other divisions that try to defend. And if they have success, it's – it's still success, right? Yeah. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a little saucy nug right yeah, now. Okay. It, it's worth pointing out. It's worth reminding people. Every national championship between 2014 mm-hmm. and 2023 was won in the South. You have to have a saucy decade, nugs. A decade of Southern dominance before you catch another natty outside of this region. Do you guys remember? Who won that first one? Well, it was Ohio, Ohio State, State in 2014. Herb, Herb's first year. And then, and then Michigan in 2023. Those are the only two teams outside of the South that have, that have natties. And so it's, it's, it's tough in those other – like you think you're, you're doing something really special, and Kalen DeBoer was doing something yeah. special, but then Washington ran into a buzzsaw. And give Michigan credit. They got the job done this year. It, 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 who knows if it would have been Georgia if they'd have been included in the CFP. We don't know. We know. What do you mean we don't know? Of course we know. <laughs> would they have beaten Michigan? Of, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course yeah, yeah. we know what would have happened. Come on. To put a bow on uh, the Michael oh, Penix no. conversation. Yeah. And before we get to some of the other quarterbacks who worked out yesterday and some other standouts, uh, Jordan Schultz of Bleacher Report did report that an NFL coach texted him after Washington's pro day yeah. with regards to Michael Penix and said, quote, freak show, dude runs a 4-5, jumps 37 inches, arm strength is crazy in person, locked in first rounder. Mm. Yeah, that, that that's just just over the top. It, it really is. It's it's just when yeah. they they fall. The in love. thing with the draft is you're going to get one guy that will say he's a lock. You'll get another scout that will say I wouldn't touch him right. in the first two rounds. Yeah, and it's it's combine. Well, you got, you got it's also pro got, day I, love exactly. Plus also, he also he had, he had some really good receivers at Washington. Yes, one yeah. of them didn't even work out. And I and I and, and I've been the one to say that you can't blame a quarterback for good receivers. But you if you watched if you watched Washington this year. Those receivers made up for many, and I will say many, intermediate throws that were off, that were off by a step or two. I don't know how any of those analysts is going to get excited about a guy who's running and throwing around blocking dummies. Yeah. They do, though. They get it, They do. They, I mean, come on. Now. I, mean, I, I want to see how he reacts to stress. They do just, just pop on the field. That Michigan game where they were oh going my. after him. Yeah. Oh, he showed – I mean – His not, last nine games, he had 23 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Yeah. And that's another thing that I was talking with Scott with a couple of days ago that said that's a little red flag for me as yeah. well. He also said that he just – he just he, – he got scared off. Mm-hmm. He got scared off by the Michigan game. Oh, yeah, yeah he did. And that's – I don't know. That's I mean, real. That's because you can't guarantee that he's going to have that strong of an offensive line. That's number one. In front of him that's in the National one. Football right. League. That's where maybe falling to the second or third round and, may actually be the best thing for yeah, him. Yeah, not only can you not guarantee he's going to have a good line – there's no duplicating what a defensive front in the NFL can do to you compared to what right, and that's the, the closest game. thing you're going to get to that. That's yeah. that's why, that's why there was so much put on a lot of the quarterbacks in the playoff because when you're talking about going against the elite, mm-hmm. how do you play against the elite? Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and that's why Mac Jones skyrocketed up draft draft boards because mm-hmm. of the way he played in the playoff. Yeah, and. Uh, How'd that go? It went well to begin with. Well, again, had, to be fair to had, Mac, he's he had, had capable he had a, coaching. He had a defensive coordinator calling plays right. for him. Yeah, for yeah. it, it and went well and when he had tight cap- ends coach being his quarterbacks. Coach. Yeah, when he had capable coaching, he was fine. Yeah. And they, they won ten football games. They put a fifty burger on this team. They smoked them, uh, and he made it to the postseason. But yeah, everything's unraveled since then, and in large part because of the coaching. Uh, which had a heck of a lot to do with it. Before we get to our reaction to Drake May and UNC, do want to note a couple um, sources that were on the ground in Washington yesterday, noting that Troy Fatanu, the star offensive tackle, I'll call him an offensive tackle because unclear if he'll play left tackle, left guard, or even right tackle in the NFL, may have worked his way into the top ten after yesterday's performance at Washington's Pro Day. Roma Dunze did not work out, instead saying that his combine speaks for itself. One guy that I'm looking for, that I think is going to quietly move up boards, and I know he's the apple of many Jaguar fans' eyes, Matt, Jalen McMillan. When we talk about this Washington wide receiver room, we obviously talk about Roman Dunze because he's a projected top ten pick. Jalen Polk had the speed, but many people from who I've spoken with also believe that if McMillan wasn't hurt, he's probably a top 30, top 40 pick yeah. instead of being a top 80 pick. And I know that's where a lot of Jaguar fans are hoping that they can, you know, maybe Trent Baalke sneaks in and, Trades back up and gets him or gets him at 48. That was kind of, that was kind of my point with his receivers. He, yeah. he had basically three top 30, top 35 receivers he was working with. Yeah. Again, that's pretty good. Again, and yeah. I, I, I'm the first guy to say, look, you can't 
you can't criticize Tua because he had three great receivers or Joe Burrow because he had three great receivers. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can see he benefited you greatly. Can, from yes, them. you can see who you can watch them throw and see who the thrower is. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My point is, if you watched Washington, you could see those receivers made a lot of plays for him, a lot. All right. So it's it, all right. Let's just do this real quick because if you're talking about at the top, Jaden <clears throat> Daniels is at the very least presenting an argument within the last couple of days. And this is what we do. This is lying season. This is shift around season. This is move my mock, move my guy up and down on my board because Caleb Williams has been the presumptive number one for quite some time. Jaden Daniels goes and lights it up in a pro day against air, Leon, like you like to point out, because there was no resistance, all right? Yeah. And all of a sudden they're gushing and, and loving on him, and the Lou Riddicks of the world are saying he's, he's QB1. Based on that, all right, so these – decisions that these guys have to make they're decade-long decisions and they're doing some of these decisions based on air i don't get it yeah uh listen a quarterback position can help or kill your franchise mm -hmm. uh, but it's a it's a coin flip it's a coin flip you, you look at just trevor's trevor lawrence's uh his his draft uh the guys who came with trevor all mm -hmm. the all the trouble they got so it's a coin flip and you, you don't know. You just don't know until you get them out there. Caleb right. Williams is, is the presumed number one player that said it's going to come off the board. But here's the one thing that I, I you tell me if I'm wrong, Matt. Well, he he does a lot of he does a lot of stuff off script. All yeah. right? a lot of off script. He holds on not the ball. A lot of off schedule, off script type of stuff. In the NFL, you're not going to be able to hold the ball 10, 12 seconds. A lot of his plays that he makes downfield with the throw on the ball, and I've watched them. Is he got he's got 10, 12, 15 seconds. He's maneuvering. He's not going to have that kind of time in the NFL. That's my only concern. So there's a him. couple things with that. Num number one, you're exactly right on that. I think he was number four in college football last year in time to throw. Mm -hmm. But number two, he gives himself time to throw. His ability to move in the pocket, his ability to ro to roll and throw accurately, that's what makes him unique. But he will just, he and, have and, that time and, and in the, the NFL? The ability to just flick the ball like Mahomes. I'm not saying he's Mahomes. I'm just saying there's a lot of Mahomes-like qualities to him mm -hmm. to where if I'm looking at him – I say, okay, yeah, I can see why he's won. Because if you look at Drake May, you say, there's a lot of inconsistencies there. Yeah, there's a guy I, that doesn't, I'll admit it. His accuracy is not as good as you, as you would like. Um, I don't think he makes – every throw is not as – he's not as accurate as not as, as – what's the best way to put this? It's not touch. It's just the ability to make every throw is not there with him right now. It doesn't mean it can't be. Yeah, my you look at Jaden Daniels, your huge red flag is, I don't know that he's durable enough. Can mm -hmm. he be durable? Because – he was he a twig picked, when we met him. If he gets picked number three overall or oh. number two overall, he's playing day one. Yeah, okay. Can you see how much weight and how much strength can you put on in four months before you play day one? Right. Uh, I, I, JJ, if you could cue up the uh, the link I just sent you. Yeah. We actually know where yeah. Jaden Daniels is going. Uh -huh. Did you guys hear this yesterday? No. Uh, the cat may be out of the bag. Uh, JJ, could you play uh, this clip from our friend, the Southerner, uh, Mr. Brian Kelly? He, he is going to be so committed to taking care of himself um, that you don't have to worry about size or he doesn't weigh enough. Uh, Lamar's done a pretty good job with his size. I think uh, Mahomes, I wouldn't consider him a giant because he's going to get the ball out to the playmakers and, and make plays uh, for Washington. Oh, a little Freudian <laughs> slip there. Ah. My point, Leon, was I think That's Caleb awesome. is, is clearly the cleanest of the quarterbacks. Yeah. And, he's got, and he, I think he has the highest ceiling as well. But to that to that point, um, Jaden Daniels to Washington. Well, the thing I mean, is, it's so funny. The program, I, mean, baby. I mean, they're not they're not bad actually. They 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 got some receivers. They're not bad. No, they well, have some receivers. Yeah, it's but, unfortunate like, actually. Some of their careers, I think, have you know been stagnated well, because like, of their quarterback play. Like yesterday, Mac Brown, because of the pro day of Drake Drake May, he's doing a picture taking moment with the two guys that are selecting second and third, right, right. the Washington Commanders and the New England Patriots. So he's taking a picture with Dan Quinn and with Gerard Mayo right. because mm -hmm. who knows where these guys are going to go. And so when Brian Kelly says that, Max over here smiling with both of them saying, my, my, my guy's going to land in one of their laps. We don't even know that because the J.J. McCarthy discussion has been brought up as well. It's classic. All right, so real quick, Matt, just roll through this, okay? And just what order in terms of weapons – the quarterbacks had to make them better. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Because we know we know Michael Penix had good weapons to throw the football to. We know JJ had Roman Wilson, pretty good weapon and and more. We know uh, Tez Walker in North Carolina. We know the two down 
in um, uh, LSU. What about? Well, I think you also got to look at offensive line. Like JJ's line, he was, oh, it was, he was superior. virtually well, untouched. It, it, it looked, so I think you got to look at that. That's number okay. one. All right. I think LSU's offensive tackles were really good. Their middle three were not good, mm-hmm. but their receivers you got two of the top fifteen receivers. Yeah, top, superb. Two and top fifteen picks, probably. Yeah, let's okay? not forget Jason Taylor's son, tight end. Yes, too. another big target. Yes, another yeah. another another good target. Um, Caleb Williams was not, believe it or not, as far as like guys to throw to an offensive line. He's he down have, the list. Yeah, the, he didn't have a lot. Of those, of those six quarterbacks, he's five or six probably. Yeah, I, I, I think it's worth pointing out that, first off, McCarthy had a great run game. So that was his, along with the offensive yeah. line, tremendous defense, mm-hmm. all that stuff. He didn't sweat anything, whereas Caleb, Caleb well, Williams was – Well, he wasn't chasing was, points. Yeah, and Caleb Williams was sweating defense, giving and up another score. And chasing points constantly. Yeah, and then, and then obviously, like you're saying, lack of, a, of line protection or whatever or a, a dynamic receiver. I mean, that all factors. Uh, Tez Walker was supposed to be a little bit better than maybe he was uh, when they finally freed Their Tez. Their line struggled, too. Yeah, yeah. Drake May didn't yeah. have a whole, whole heck of a lot of time to do anything. Yeah, I mean, the 60-play the workout yesterday that we saw, look, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's also in T-shirt shorts, to Leon's sure. point. It's yeah. with blocking dummies. I mean, the the, the throw that everybody's Pajam- showcasing. Pajamas. I call them pajamas. Like, like, I just want to point out. I mean, out. yes, it's crazy that he's got, you know, this wild of an arm. I mean, this is the big play that NFL Network's been showing time and time again. So what's that, Matt? That's about mm-hmm. it's a good 60. In the air? 60. It's a good 60. Yeah. 60, yeah. 60 yeah. yards through the air. And, like, the footwork, I mean, I'm not Denny. I'm not a quarterback expert. But, again, right. there's no pressure. There's no one in his yeah, face. Yeah. It's all scripted. And, look, I have a Pop-Tart crush on the man. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you it. actually met him in yeah. person yeah. and texted us and said you felt yeah. like you had just spoken to the next coming of yeah. second coming of Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, the Matthew McConaughey of college football. Look, I, I had a moment. I'm not going to deny it. He's going to be it. doing Lincoln commercials. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not going to deny it. But at the same time, 24 touches, nine picks, uh, and – Made some bad decisions. He did, uh, and things kind of went south. I think the problem with him is, and and this is a story I actually did at Saturday Down South, yeah. publishing shortly, with all these quarterbacks, and I'm glad we're talking about this, mm-hmm. is in college football right now, and in NFL too, you know, the game is catered toward the offense, right? Mm-hmm. So you should be able to be a successful thrower if you are an elite guy that wants to be picked in the first five, ten picks. Right. He completed 63% of his passes. Yeah. He should have been over 70. Yeah, 66 the year before. Yeah. So you. So he, he went down. He went down, right? Yeah. And, again, that you could say he had a new OC, new offensive coordinator, new quarterbacks coach. He yeah. lost uh, – he lost uh, – I can't even remember his name now to, – to Wisconsin, the new Wisconsin OC. Yeah, and then they brought in uh, Chip Lindsey. Chip Lindsey, yeah, right. To, so, to so take over for him. You could say it's partly that, but you, you can't – Look, you cannot complete 63% of your passes in college. If, you, if, you, if you're going to be – I don't care what <laughs> league it is. If you're going to be considered a top five pick, you yeah. just can't. Like, well, that's a big red flag for me. Yeah. That's a, Oh, I'm like, I don't know about that. That's what I would be thinking. Yeah. So right. one right. note from the UNC Pro Day. Uh, this is from uh, fellow Ithaca – Phil Longo, that's who it was. Okay. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. No, you're right. good. Uh, fellow <laughs> Ithaca bomber turned New England Patriots beat reporter uh, Evan Lazar reported from UNC's Pro Day with Drake May yesterday – that, quote, May can flat out spin it. The degree of difficulty far exceeded what we saw in Baton Rouge a day earlier from Jaden Daniels. That's not to say the reigning Heisman Trophy winner did poorly or that May was perfect because he did have two erratic misses on deep outs early. However, May's coaches were simulating pressure by blitzing him to move him off his spot, forcing him to throw (laughs) off platform, adding as much of a challenge as possible in this setting to stay on time and throw accurately, which says to me, Matt, to your point, they identified we need to showcase that when there is even simulated Just pressure. Just look at Cersei's smile. I was saying, did they use Cersei's pillow? Smile over that was one. it pillows? <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Right. Pillow you know, yeah, okay. You know, uh, what are those? You know what I'm talking about. I, I know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Blitzing him in the simulated But at the same time, they're all, like, they're trying to figure out which one to put their money on. Okay? Yeah, yeah. This is a black, red. This is a 22. This is a, they're trying to put. Where, roulette, where am I putting baby. my chips? Yeah, roulette. It ain't easy. It ain't easy to pick oh. They're on the pro day tour circuit. Yeah. Are yeah. those quarterback needy teams? Glad that this team isn't. But where could this team go with its first round pick? Well, I think a couple things that we need to get back into the first round pick decision, the culture comment that Doug had paired up with the, you had the we found the DJ Chark soundbite from his sit down Humphreys. with Marlon Humphrey, uh, and it was interesting what he was talking about with the culture of this team, and then what Eric Armstead also had said. We got all that. Coming. 
Oh, We're going to wow. talk culture coming up in the 1 o'clock hour of XL Primetime. We are live from Players Grill in Mandarin. Folks, there's plenty of tables. I see so many tables that we want to see your beautiful faces sitting at. We have great specials. They also have live music. Yes, you heard that right. We're actually on the stage right now. But tonight it will actually be Claire Van Diver that will be here at 8 p.m. And then next Friday, April 5th, the band Be Easy will be here at 8 p.m. as well. Live music, good food. It's where the neighborhood meets, and it's where we will be till 3 p.m. right here on XL Primetime. The First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. Mia here for Window Gang. With spring here, it's time to give your home or business a refresh inside and out. Ever think about what lurks on your windows, driveways, and gutters after all those cold and rainy months? Look at all the pollen out there right now. Window Gang's exterior cleaning services will banish stubborn stains, restore windows to a crystal clear shine, and ensure your gutters flow freely. Mold and grime don't stand a chance against Window Gang's top-notch pressure washing services. They'll have your home and business looking brand new. I've seen the difference firsthand. Window Gang has been out to my house. Call 262-7300 for a free estimate and let Window Gang bring the sparkle back to your property today. Just check out their Google reviews online. That's 262-7300. Call Window Gang today. Ever wonder what Dan Hicken and Jeff Prosser did before the drill? How long have we been friends? We're not friends. Dan and Jeff. Mm -hmm, But if we teamed up, it could bring your career to the next level. Mornings on 1010XL. Let's fire up the flavor and ignite those appetites. Let's slow down and smell the barbecue. Because all your favorites are smoked for hours and ready for eating when you are. From our famous ribs to slow smoked pork. Enjoy some perfection by the plateful, safely in our dining room or in the comfort of your home. With curbside pickup, drive through and delivery. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Mia here, and if you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, at the nonstop action of the madness with my bookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit, all the way up to 1000 bucks. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. The best part about MyBookie? You can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today. Only MyBookie. Men suffering from erectile dysfunction or PE? Frustrated taking pills that don't work? Here's a message from Prime Men's Medical Center. I'm Dr. Simovitz. Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough treatments with men lasting longer than ever without pain or surgery. Call now. Your consultation and first treatment are free. You'll see instant results right in the office. Call Prime Men's Medical Center now. 904-664-8217. That's 904-664-8217. Certainly facing challenging economic times. I can't speak for all of us. But for me, comforting to know my money is in good hands with ITP Partners. Take it here for ITP Partners. Jacksonville guys, taking care of my Jacksonville money. I'll admit it, I don't understand a ton about the economy. Higher interest rates, 401ks. But I do know as I move closer to retirement, I continue to watch my money grow. Thanks to Chris Bryan, Jeff Hartman, Reagan Wright, Dan Abel, and Reed Wingate. Get in the game, guys. ITP Partners, always there to help. For more info, Chris at ITPPartners.com or call 904-312-9751. Start your Sunday off with a cup of joe and some sports medicine intel. This is Joe C. inviting you to join me and Dr. George Bari for Breaking Bones every Sunday morning at 7.30. And if you miss an episode, just look for Breaking Bones wherever you listen to podcasts. If you've played sports or still lead an active life, chances are joint pain is nothing new. This is Dr. George Bari of Bari Orthopedics, and we like to be your option when it comes to taking care of your body and getting back in the game. From shoulders to elbows to hip and knee pain, Bari Orthopedics can diagnose and treat a variety of injuries that are causing you pain. We are Bari Orthopedics and online at bariorthopedics.com. With more than 30 years of experience, our team is here to care for your entire family. Find out more at bariorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. Home of the Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. 
someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away? I'm Susan Cohen, and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein and Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI, domestic violence, and all criminal offenses. In your battle with the justice system, there's only one thing you need to know. Dial David, 24-7 at Epstein and Robbins, 354-5645. 354-5645. It's back, the biggest jewelry sale of the year. Buy one, get one at Beard's Diamonds. No other jewelry store in North Florida can match it. Buy any band and get the other one free. The whole month of April. Beard's Diamonds will beat any competitor's price. At the St. John's Town Center. Duck Duck Rooter is now hiring plumbers. We offer excellent weekly pay, paid holidays, health insurance, 401k, and so much more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com. That's DuckDuckRooter.com and click on the careers page. Duck Duck Rooter is an equal opportunity employer. When you hear Florida Gators baseball on 1010XL, it's brought to you by Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Farah and Farah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. What are the only two cities to host three editions of the Olympic Games? Southern Oak Insurance knows that you want to save money on your homeowner's insurance. So why not try some old-fashioned common sense? Ask your Southern Oak agent about our roof replacement schedule. It will save you money. Our family protecting yours. Southern Oak Insurance. With Paris hosting the 2024 Summer Olympics, they join London as the only other city to host three different Olympics. Southern Oak Insurance, our family protecting yours. This is Molly McDonald with your 1010XL Southeast Orthopedic Specialist local sports update. Brought to you by Awaken 180. Baseball is back. During opening day yesterday, the Jacksonville area was well represented with Mike Bauman and Austin Hayes on the Orioles, both from JU as well as Austin Slater on the Giants and DJ Stewart on the Mets, who were previously Bulls students. The Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp opened 1-1 to Financial Ballpark tonight for the 2024 season with the three-game series against the Gwinnett Stripers. First pitch at 6. College baseball gets back on the mound tonight as the number 6 Florida Gators host Mississippi State in its third straight SEC series this weekend. Florida has won the last five games between the two. Your starting pitcher tonight is Brandon Neely throwing out the first pitch at 6.30. Liam Peterson will start on Saturday, and Jack Caglion will wrap up the series on Sunday. You can listen to Gator Baseball all weekend long on 10.10 10 a.m. It's 76 degrees at 1 o'clock, time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Definitely having a big time. Players Grill, where the neighborhood meets. Players Grill Mandarin on San Jose Boulevard. You can come on by this one. You can hit Miramar on Hendricks. You can hit the Oakleaf Plantation. They always got cool things going on at all of the Players Grill locations. And today you can enjoy uh, some good grub here, some cold beer. And I've already told you, they've got it set up with uh, Corona's the Cerveza, official Cerveza of Major League Baseball. So you'll be able to come in here now that the season has started and enjoy a cold one. You've got Stella's, Bud Lights, Ultras, all in special 75-cent wing Wednesday. So you want to make sure you drop on by. And then they just said, uh, Megan and Phil, they put together Music Bingo Mm. starting at 6 p.m. Thursdays next Thursday. So April 4th, they will crank up Music Bingo. 6 o'clock on Thursdays, so make sure you make plans for a little music bingo action. Bottom line is they got something going on all the time, including bands and performers every Friday night. Uh, tonight, you will have Claire Vandiver hanging out here at 8 o'clock, and then you also will have next week. Let me make sure I get this one right. Uh, next week, uh, the band be easy next Friday at 8 So our o'clock. fellas on the, and gals on the text line are asking, yep. uh, do they have seafood here? Because you know, they're Catholic and yeah. Well, did you just order a little? They have, literally just ordered well, a, a shrimp Caesar yeah, salad. There's shrimp Caesar salads. There's pizza. There's fish and chips. I believe. Am I oh, not yeah, right, I had, O'Leary? I had, I had the fish. I had the fish and yeah, chips, last, and chips last time. All right, so yeah, it was you know, good. If you are a Catholic, come on down. Yeah, excellent, excellent fish and chips. Uh, so you can enjoy all of them. Just drop on by. I'm going to eat for y'all, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and John Party. John yeah. Party was very excited when we said we're not eating those potato skins. I saw he was yeah, like, all he, right, he this, is my, this is my moment. Yeah, he dove in. He don't care. The Irish Catholic, he doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. I just got him, by the way. By the way, look, Jay- he just gave me to look like you know my mom doesn't know that I'm yeah. not eating. <laughs> JJ, could we oh. cue up uh, either a round of applause or a happy birthday song for John Party? It is his birthday week. He okay. also was just accepted as a transfer to the University of North Florida. This, of course, our intern John O'Leary, videographer, yeah. videographer extraordinaire, engineer extraordinaire too. Nice. And I, I did bring back for his birthday from the homeland. I found uh, the O'Leary. Irish shield. So now he has a coaster oh, nice. for that. Okay. That's beautiful. That's well awesome. Done. So he well is Irish. Party. So I'm a little concerned if it's Catherine or Protestant, oh, and therefore Catholic. if we're just oh, it's Irish well, Catholic. Catholic. If we're just if we're just negative influence. Look at that, look at that right red now. face. He's de- he's listen, now embarrassed. He's exactly, Irish Catholic. Yeah. I can tell you that. Listen, until he cuts that hair, he's gonna be wham. <laughs> <laughs> All right, six four one ten ten. You can get the text line designed by Lifetime Enclosure. You can go to YouTube, check us out there. Ten ten XL. You can search it. You will see us on the stage right here at Players Grill Mandarin. We finished off this last hour talking a little bit about uh, the culture, everything that's gone on here, and what Doug Peterson was trying to get to. Foye Aluakan by restructuring the deal and getting a new deal. He may be one of the centerpieces of that new culture. And, and I want to fire up that one comment, and then we'll get back to this conversation with Eric Armstead talking about not getting his deal in San Francisco, choosing to come here, and then what DJ Chark had to say back in the day about this football team. But, J.J., just fire up that uh, Dougie Fresh uh, about the, well, the collection of free agents, veterans with experience on winning teams that are that are now part of Duval. This is the culture that I want to establish in, in Jacksonville, and, and this is the reason why you go get guys like Mitch Morse and Eric Armsteads and the Darnell Savages and guys that have been to the postseason. These guys have been captains on their teams, and you know they've been to Super Bowls, they've they've been to AFC Championship games. Um, you know, so these guys know how to win, and, and that's that's kind of the influx of talent that we want to bring onto this our young roster. Guys that have been there, done that, and. And, um, you know, again, it's just I've got to continue to, to message the team in the right way. And, and you know, there's got to be a sort of a confidence about you that, you know, when you when you take the field on game day that, hey, you know, yeah, you, 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 there's going to be game. You're going to get beat. I understand that. But you've got to have that confidence and that swagger that, that uh, you know, you're going to get the job done, you know, uh, on game day. And, and I think bringing in some of these free agents we did this, this spring um, are going to help that. Yeah, you know what? It, it resonates well with a young team when you've got veterans who've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. You don't want to hear anything from somebody who hasn't been there before, you know. So when Doug is talking about bringing in guys who played in Super Bowl, played in playoffs, played in championship games, and in that locker room with a young team that, quite frankly, has only been in the playoffs, what, two times in the last five years, something yeah, like that? There's, only, there's nobody really there's, left yeah, there's no, from the yeah, there's nobody, Exactly, nobody yeah. really left from the 17th. So you got a team that just went to the playoffs last year, still relatively young, and you bring in a veteran guy – who I take Fortner for instance. Mm-hmm. All right, I told you more than one two things can happen to Fortner right now. He can learn from this, right. or he can let it linger. All right, he can learn on a niece Morris, Mitch. You're talking about a guy who, who's a pro bowler, who's played in playoff games, has been through the struggle. He's got to be a sponge now. Fortner's got to become a sponge because this guy's going to start, and he's got to learn from it. Techniques, fundamentals, how to train, how to watch film how to study, how to, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think Fortner is still going to – he's going to get better because of the situation. And you say, how can he get better? He's going to be demoted. He's going to get better because he's going to learn for the next couple of years and, and, and hopefully grow from it. But, yeah, I know what Doug's saying. Is, when, I was brought, when I was brought here in Jacksonville, uh, rather, I, I was brought here – I just come off the Super Bowl. You, you were brought here as a winner. Exactly. I was brought here as a winner. I, played, I made the playoffs every year as I was a still and played the Super Bowl. So he wanted that kind of, he wanted that kind of leadership to resonate in the locker room. So is Cam the only one that's been in two playoff Probably years? Cam. Now that Smoot's yeah. gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I believe that's it. So. Mm-hmm. And Shatley. Yeah. 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 Is he? Okay. That right. was it. That was it. Those yeah. two guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but l- let's bring that now to the point, Leon, of identity. Mm-hmm. In the 12 o'clock hour, you said what about the Jaguars' identity? No cult- they didn't have any culture. They have no culture. Yeah. They're floating in the wind. They're floating in the wind. I think that as we have sought over the last few weeks to find what – this culture, this identity may be for this team, what they're thinking this identity may be. The go-to has been physicality in the trenches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because when you think of the Steelers, the Ravens, physicality is such an – it's synonymous with culture. Mm -hmm. I think that your culture doesn't necessarily have to be we're physical. It could be something else. And it also doesn't have to necessarily, as much as the heart of your team is the trenches – does it have to solely be defined by the trenches? That's where I think bringing in a Gabe Davis who was a wide receiver. Obviously, 
Eric Armstead and Mitch Morris are at the heart of it, Mm -hmm. bringing in a Darnell Savage, a Ronald Darby, guys who have won a Super Bowl before, been in the secondary of a playoff team that was in the AFC Championship game. That also is creating identity, is it not? Well, I'm a little old school. I think the heart, I think the heartbeat of your team is is found from the inside out. How your offensive line plays, how your defensive line plays. I think they set the tempo for the offense and the defense. How how if you got a physical offensive line and physical defense, more times nine times out of ten, you're going to be a pretty physical bunch. Not only physical, but you're going to be mentally tough. Mm-hmm. You're going to be mentally tough as well. I, I give examples like when I was with the Steelers, right? Ron Earhart was our offensive coordinator, and before games. He used to ask the offensive line, what do you want to run? We got top ten plays. Offensive line, give me, I'm giving you the first five plays. Tell me what you want to run. I mean, he was sitting right there. He said, I don't care I don't care that we have this quarterback, this receiver, whatever, this offensive line is the, dictates the offense and how it goes and how it moves and maneuvers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, look, if you have the plan, mm-hmm. the organization, organizational plan, and then you got those players to buy in. Then you got players policing themselves. That's how it all starts. That's why yeah. we all, I always refer to the pyramid. It has to be at the tip top, and then it works its way down for you to create this environment. And I'm not sure if – listen, I've been out to the practices. It's not the kind of practices that I'm used to mm-hmm. when I was playing. Full pads Friday? Yeah, no, for full pads Friday. <laughs> but what I'm saying but, – but you know what we used to do as players? Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, if our team – if the defense struggled with uh, – giving up big plays and runs and stuff like that, the offensive side of the ball would be watching our defense, and we would get on them. If they missed a tackle, they missed a player, they missed an interception, all this, and we would say, hey, all, hey defense, we ain't going to have that. We, you know, or if the offense struggled, mm-hmm. if the offense struggled and you're dropping passes, formally interceptions and all that kind of stuff, pressures and stuff like that, the defense would get on us. I'm just saying it's just holding each other accountable on it. the field. You know, not to, whatever you did last week that, that contributed to us losing, we're not going to have that again. It ends today. And you know how we rectify it? We rectify it in practice. You do it, you rectify it in practice. You call out each other. You hold everybody accountable. If they get mad, so what? You're preaching. Huh? You're preaching. I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, it's we, also, I, we I, love don't, it. I don't know how you magically get more physical on the line of scrimmage. I mean, you certainly get Eric Armstead who could help, but you've got to draft that way now, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And, and, mm-hmm. and we've been saying this now for the last couple of weeks now since free agency is. It's it's got to be all defense, does it not? Well, it's got to I mean, be with, majority. The, with the exception of yeah. because they've doubled down on the guards. So yeah. my guard guard theory is out. Right. They've doubled down on, on on what they're doing on the offensive line, and and they're hoping Cooper Hodges. I'm sure is a guy that is gives slides them, in, gives them yeah backup, and then slides in. And and of course you got friend of the show Tyler Shatley, yeah. who also is just a solid option there at guard. So it's got to be interior defensive well, but, line. It's got to be edge defensive line. But at the very least. They did answer. It's got to be corner. They did answer the bell in terms of something has to be done in the interior part of the offensive line. They did. Now it, it, I don't know. I don't know if I would say that. Yeah. See, I don't know if I would say. Well, that. Well, I, I think replacing Luke Fortner as a starter, they hope you have a technician. I, I'll tell you a story. I, I, a buddy of mine who hopefully will be able to get Mitch on anyway. Family friends. They go all the way back, and they have followed this guy and the aptitude, which we always like to bring up especially with the offensive line, Leon, mm-hmm. that this dude knows everything. No, I like his Mitch leadership Morris. skills. I like but, that. But it's almost like you have to look at the, I think, the addition of him helping Brandon Sheriff get back to a Pro Bowl type of player because he, he's not a weak link. And then Anton Harrison in his second year on the other side of Sheriff. And then Ezra, he's going to make him better too. I think that's a plus. I, and I think what uh, – else Mitch Morris is going to bring to the table is the fact that, okay, don't get me wrong, Sheriff did not play amazing last year, but yeah. his believability is going to be more so for Mitch Moore than it was for Fortner. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the guy who's an all-pro. Mm-hmm. He He's playing next, and he's next to Fortner, who's obviously struggling. So he doesn't believe in him as much. Uh, yeah, saying, you know I, I, I you know can understand that. Yeah, yeah, and I actually understand what you're saying by that. Like, it's his play is naturally going to suffer – if the guy inside him mm-hmm. is struggling. I Absolutely. completely agree and understand what you're saying there. All I'm saying is I think you saw enough. He's older, okay? Mm-hmm. It happens to everybody. It's not a criticism. He's getting older. Mm-hmm. His skills are diminishing. And to say that you only, we only saw this group together for one game, which, by the way, they got dominated <laughs> against the Titans. Decimated. It averaged to about three and a half but yards per carry. you clearly yeah. saw enough with Ezra. Yeah. Clearly saw enough of whether you think – He's going to be a guy that's going to be physical. They think he is. Did you guys, when you saw him, 
Did you get the idea that he's the a Texans physical game. guard? The Texans yeah, game, I, I did. But I, yeah. well, let me let me backtrack. I didn't, you know, I, I, I didn't see enough. That's that's my answer. right That's now. my only red flag. I'm with not the whole gonna, thing. I, I'm not. I, I think Morse. I'm fine with Morse. Yeah. I think it's an upgrade. It's the two guards is my problem. Mm-hmm. Let me backtrack and let me say this. Maybe it's not physical, but it's athleticism for sure. Raw athletic score, mm-hmm. according to Math Bomb, the Jaguars were. 8.23, that actually was fifth in terms of raw athletic ability along mm-hmm. their offensive line last year. You swap out Shatley and Luke Fortner for Mitch Wait, Morris is, and Ezra Cleveland. What's raw athletic score? What you is know, it? Yeah. when right, they do uh, – well, we, we don't have enough time yeah. for it, but it's when, it's when they take all of their testing from, like, your 40, oh, okay, your height, okay. your, wet, your weight, all that. So it that. doesn't have anything to do with how they play on the field. No, though. no, what I was getting at is maybe athleticism, getting out in space. That right. may be – Right, when he was running against the Texas. That's the identity yeah, they yeah, want yeah, to yeah. have. And right. like you're saying, give me a grade for toughness. That, that's, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. All right, now speaking of tough, Irish Chappelle. Nothing says more tough right. than Irish and fell. Warchant.com. They had a scrimmage yesterday uh, uh, with FSU. We're going to talk about that and this whole lawsuit action uh, that is coming up between them and the ACC. That's actually not coming up. It's happening right now. We'll do that with him coming up as we are hanging out at Players Grill Mandarin. Buckle up. You're in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios with XL Primetime on 1010XL. Find your new Honda at your eight local Honda dealers. 1010XL. For the second time, the Gators celebrate as national champions. Home of the Florida Gators. Now, the Florida Gator Report on 1010XL. Brought to you by Darley's Plumbing. Number six, Florida Gator baseball fell to number 17, Florida State, last night. Jack Caglione hit his 12th home run and picked up his 15th multi-hit game, but it wasn't enough in the 14-3 loss. Florida has won 22 of the last 28 meetings, but FSU has won both so far this season. They meet again April 9th in Tallahassee. Hi, folks, it's Frank Franzi. I'm so thankful to Darley's Plumbing and all the extensive plumbing work they did at the Bragan Baseball Complex, our new walk-off charities field. The Darley's team was responsive and professional at every step on this project. And the result is a facility I love. Darley's is a company I trusted for my plumbing needs, and you can too. Thanks for those kind words, Frank. At Darley's Plumbing, we don't just do residential house calls. We're your first draft pick for commercial business plumbing too. Darley's Plumbing, where quality counts. When it's time for the March Mania brackets to bust wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The Mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. Florida Soffers. And when the madness starts in Cinderella... Man steps under the <laughs> Bet US always has your back with <laughs> back to back to back 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits <laughs> and even 10% gambler's insurance. <laughs> BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game <laughs> Join today. BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. Top Dog Tavern is your gathering place for family and friends, offering something for everyone. Want a delicious meal served with a smile? We have you covered. Shareable appetizers. Hot and crispy wings, juicy tavern burgers, fresh salads, plus a large craft beer selection. And there is nowhere better to watch all the big games than on our multiple TVs. Enjoy great food, cold drinks, and good times at Top Dog Tavern, located in Bartram Park off Old St. Augustine Road. If you're ready to upgrade your home's backyard living appeal and just need some design inspiration, let the experts at Art of Natural Stone make your outdoor living perfect. Known for summer kitchens, pergolas, pavers, patios, and pool decks using all natural stone. All the custom elements you need for a first class professional design and they do installation. Open to the public on Phillips Highway and on Beach Boulevard. Find ideas online at artofnaturalstone.com. Quarterbacking can be complicated. Denny Thompson simplifies it for us. Yeah, I want to tell you what's really happening at the quarterback position. Friday mornings on The Drill, brought to you by Tyson Sound and Security and George Moore Chevrolet on 1010XL. Hey, Jacksonville, I'm sure by now you've seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We are an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We are committed to customer service, reliability, and have unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today. GFL, green for life. Jimerson Burr is a full-service Florida-based commercial law firm dedicated to helping businesses manage risk, maximize opportunities, and move their company forward. 
Jimerson Burr attorneys are business-oriented lawyers, equally comfortable as community leaders, private transaction counselors, or courtroom advocates. If you have a legal issue of any kind affecting your business, contact the firm at 389-0050 or jimersonfirm.com. Baloo here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit SmunezVision.com today. Care you can see. Ever wonder how you can transform your living spaces into captivating works of art? At First Coast Lighting and Fans, they offer a huge selection of high quality products to match your desire for elegance, quality, and uniqueness. Visit their showroom on Phillips Highway at the Avenues and step into a world of quality without compromise. Discover the difference that locally owned expertise makes and let them help you experience the transformation from average to extraordinary. At First Coast Lighting and Fans, I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, Director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees. About $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to ETAJAX.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. Game 10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Let's ring up another guest on the All Pro Roofing phone line. Up to Tallahassee, Ira Chaffel. He is a part time legal reporter. <laughs> we okay. were just talking about your raw athletic <laughs> score, Ira. Yeah. I, hope that, uh, I hope that makes you feel. Very tough and, and sturdy. Welcome back into XL Primetime. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Like like maybe a part-time true TV uh, reporter uh, in, <laughs> in the courtrooms all the time. Uh, and, then, and then occasionally on a football field. And uh, the scrimmage led us to you, Ira. Uh, Ira Chaffel of Warchant.com, all things Knowles. You can definitely check him out there as he heads up that, uh, that website full of uh, material for you to consume. Uh, and then this whole dang legal thing. Where do you want to start first? You want to go legal? You want to go football field? Oh, I don't know if it matters. It's, it's <laughs> all uh, it's it's all ever changing. Uh, you know, again, from a football standpoint, it's definitely a new look roster. They lost, I guess, seven stars on offense, seven stars on defense. So there's so many new faces trying to work in. There's, there's a lot going on there. And then, like you said, the lawsuit. Every every day, it seems like there's something new there. But nothing's really happening with that. It's just kind of like a lot of jousting by lawyers. Uh, I don't know how quickly it's going to be resolved, but it's, it's at least entertaining along the way. Now, believe it or not, I called it the Florida State Trailblazers when it came to uh, what y'all were doing as far as getting up out of the ACC. I just wanted to let you <laughs> know that. <laughs> now, now we got to see who's going to follow along. Exactly. So, so as far as football goes, I mean, you got the five new transfers uh, from Alabama. I mean, how, how do those guys fit in and – are those guys going to be potential starters for you this coming season? They definitely look legit. I mean, you can tell guys that come from a program like that. You know, it's just – and, again, this is – you know, the first couple of years where Mike Norvell did well with transfers, you know, he was taking, you know, guys from Arizona State or Oregon or, you know, Western Michigan or Albany or, you know, just not the big uh, national elite programs. But now, you know, as you said, you bring in five guys from Alabama – uh, Jalen Brown, a receiver from LSU, uh, Marvin Jones Jr. from Georgia. These these are all guys. They they may not have all played major roles at those schools, or they probably wouldn't have transferred. Uh, but they're that caliber of player, and they've been in that kind of program, like where they know they've been in a strength program. They know what it looks like to, to be a, a potential NFL player. So they got seven of those guys, and, and you could tell those guys should be ready to play right away. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if all, all nearly all of them, if they don't start. They're, they're major players on the team this season. All right, so we can let, we can get into football in a little bit. I want to go back to the courts, Ira, because I think this is this is it's critical. It's critical not only for Florida State but for the college football moving forward. Um, 
What are the odds? You've talked to people there. You've talked to people uh, clearly off the record there. What are the odds of North Carolina eventually joining? Because I think once North Carolina joins, then it's all over for the ACC at that point. I mean, I definitely think there's they, their belief here is that, that North Carolina is moving in that direction. Uh, but I think all along the people of Florida State have known that they were going to be the most – Florida State was going to be the most willing to go out on the ledge because – they really didn't feel like they had anything to lose. You know, Florida right. State, uh, you know, the, they look at these, you know, these television contracts with the SEC, you know, the SEC and, and the Big Ten, and they just, they look at a world where they cannot compete in football, and that's what that's what matters the most to them. You know, they're, they're driven by succeeding in football and then using that revenue to support these other sports. Well, North Carolina, you know, they may look at it differently, and they may say, you know what, we don't like this deal, we don't want to be second-class citizens, but it's not the end of the world if we're not great in football. Can we still be great in basketball? And so, so I think there's always been a concern that, okay, yes, North Carolina is in, in, believes the same things that Florida State and Clemson believe, but it, when push comes to shove, will they really make that jump? And uh, I will say this, you know, when, when Bubba Cunningham, North Carolina's athletic director, was taking some shots at Florida State over the last year, people at Florida State were telling me, well, his board feels differently. Um, so I, th- I think that there's a lot to North Carolina possibly leaving, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> you know, they probably don't have as much risk with football going downhill as, as Florida State or Clemson. They're all in on that sport. Ira Chaffel, of course, his work, you can find him at warchant.com, and you can find him on X at Ira Chaffel, tweeting all things Knowles. As well as some Orioles. Uh, enjoy, of course, some baseball content on there as well, sir. Uh, I, I do think that they will win the AL East, and that's coming from a Yankees fan. But staying with the topic at hand, Ira, if you had to guess, especially in speaking with people in North Carolina's camp, Clemson's camp, where do these teams go if they are to get out of that grant of rights? Is the Big 12, Big 12 the most likely landing destination for Florida State and company? No, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Florida State, I think, would be a, a huge um, – disappointment i think honestly if they end up in the big 12 unless the big 12 does reinvent itself as this power conference and can strike a a a revenue deal something close to what the sec and the big 10 are going i just don't know how possible that is i I just i'm a little bit curious about whether or not they can really command that kind of money so i i still think there's a better chance they end up um either in the big 10 or the sec and right now i'd probably lean towards the big 10 just because the big 10 seems more willing to make to be aggressive. I think Fox really wants to be uh, the big player in the college sports space, and I think they want to compete with ESPN, so that would make them attractive. At the end of the day, though, uh, it wouldn't shock me if the SEC stepped in. So, uh, I don't know if I'm putting percentages on all of it. If I was, I would say probably I'd lean a little bit more to Big Ten than SEC, than Big 12, but the Big 12 is certainly the most willing acceptor at this point. I just don't know how attractive they are unless they can prove they can bring in the big money. Matt, I want to get back to DJ and football, but I know when he said SEC, I saw your reaction. No, I just said I just think it, it's – so what I've been told is, is, is Fox is willing to pay more for Florida State and Clemson. So you know how, how Florida State was initially looking for that, uh, you know, a preferred revenue distrib- distribution from the ACC, which now, according to your story that you just wrote two days ago, now looks like that's off the table, that it's now clear that Florida State wants out and there's no more idea of them possibly getting back. They just want out. Um what, what, is that a possibility where if the Big 12 and Fox says, okay, we're going to pay you more to be part of the Big 12, is that a possibility, you think? Oh, yeah, I think that's possible. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, that is possible. Um, I just think that uh, it, as long as they're not getting lapsed, because, again, I think what one of the things that drives Florida State, and this is common sense, but they're, they're looking at what they make and they're looking at what Florida makes. And yeah. as long as Florida is going to make – $20 million a year. You know, it was one thing 10 years ago when we went through all this. Um, you know, the difference was maybe 8 to $10 million a year. Well, if the difference is going to be 30 or $40 million a year, that's not tenable. So, yeah, if, if somebody else could get them close to that, yeah, I think that would definitely open their eyes. A couple more for Irish Chappelle, warchant.com, uh, with the scrimmage yesterday and, again, close to the media, so you have limited access. But uh, where are you at with, uh, with DJU and, and the fact that, they still pinned a lot of hope, at least coming before that transfer was official in Brooklyn. Where, where are you at with the quarterback position? I think it's going 
Uh, well, um, you know, I think there's a perception that because DJ has played so much college football, he started 40 college football games at two different schools now, that, uh, you know, he's going to step in and be that guy right away. And, you know, he's not, like, unbelievable at practice, but he's just his fifth practice at Florida State. So, I think he's been solid from a physical standpoint. I mean, people have known this since he was in high school. You're not going to find a, a, a guy with a better arm, better just physical tools than DJ Leungle. The question is, how quickly can he learn this offense? And how? what can Mike Norvell do to kind of minimize some of the things he struggled with at Clemson? And I think that's Mike Norvell. I think Mike Norvell's excited about that. I think he really believes he can take DJ to another level. I think one big thing is is confidence. I think DJ, I think uh, DJ struggled with confidence earlier in his career, and Mike Norvell's one of his greatest strengths is, is getting his players to believe in themselves. So I think it's going to go well. But but yeah, after five or six practices, I wouldn't tell you, oh, this guy's no doubt going to be the ACC Player of the Year. Uh, but I think it may end up that way once he's been in the system for a while. Now, Ira, what position group are you most excited about just, just from spring alone and what group that you, you got concerns moving forward? I really like their secondary. I love their secondary. Uh, Azaria Thomas who, who was like the third corner last year, I think, is about to become a star. Um, the, other, you know, the safety, Shaheen Brown, is I think he's got a chance to be a, an exceptional college football player. Uh, the other corner, Fentrell Cypress, is basically a third or fourth year college starter in the ACC. So this and then he's got really good young talent in that secondary. I think that secondary is going to make a lot of big plays this fall. And Patrick Sertan, who's now their position coach, I think has just fueled them with a lot of uh, swagger. I mean, it's a very talkative, chatty, aggressive bunch, and I think they're going to play really well. Um, position that you, I'm concerned about, maybe a linebacker still. Uh, you know, you lost two starters, Tatum Bethune and uh, uh, Kalen DeLoach, who started last year. Neither one was like an all-time great Florida State linebacker, but they were solid. They didn't get beat a lot. They made the routine plays. They were and they were just good, um, good communicators on the field. They've got talent at that position, and, and they've got some experience. But I don't know if you have that solidity in the middle of the defense. So that's something that concerns me a little bit. But but overall, I think Florida State's done a good job of restocking the cupboard for all that they lost. Ira, realistic expectations for the Knowles, especially as a 12-team playoff is set to take effect this year. Is the talk in Tallytown still, hey, it may not be 13-0, and but this is still a team that reloads and makes it to the playoff? Yeah, and I think DJ changed all of that. I think before DJ transferred in, and you guys mentioned Brocklin earlier, they like Brocklin, and he's had a nice spring, and he's a talented kid, and a, and a really uh, just uh, got a lot to him. He's got a lot of stuff to him. But, you know, I don't think that anybody thought they, they could win 10 games or more with Brock Lennon, quarterback, who's a redshirt freshman. DJ changes that. I think the defense is going to be really good, and I think the feeling is that, yeah, man, maybe they can get to 10 wins during the regular season, get to the ACC championship game, and if you win that, you know, you may, you know, you may be in the playoffs. So I think that's the goal. Um, but, you know, this, this team is not without flaws, and, and there's so many new faces that it wouldn't be a shock if, if they fell a little bit short of that. Hey, Ira, before we let you go, um, Hakeem Williams, is, is, he, is he coming along? Is he a guy that can be productive for them this year? Because the guy can run, man. There's no doubt about that. He's another one. You know, coming off the bus, it's like, okay, that looks like an NFL receiver. Um, right. And, he, you know, and, he, and he's, he's, he's gotten better and better. He's, you know, he's only a, his second year in the program, a true sophomore, um, but definitely has all the physical tools. I think the thing I want to see from him is, like, to just – carry himself like that guy, like any 50-50 ball is mine. That was the one thing Keon Coleman had. I think, you know, Hakeem Williams may have more natural ability maybe in terms of top end speed and things like that than Keon Coleman. But Keon right. Coleman believed every ball that went up in the air was his ball. And Hakeem needs to get that. I haven't seen that yet, but, man, there's no doubt he's got all the ability. Dude, thanks, man. We appreciate it. We'll keep up uh, with FSU during spring uh, by heading to warchant.com. You can follow Ira on X as well, at Ira Chappell. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah, man. Uh, and, and Greedy Vance is another guy that's that's back yeah. there in that secondary yep. that, that yep. you definitely – They're very that's good, a good in the back group, man. And I didn't even get to ask Ira. I mean, the, the great mystery surrounding Patrick Payton. Mm -hmm. As of now, he's back in Tallahassee mm -hmm. after – 
Did he enter the portal? Did he not enter the portal? Was he looking for money from Florida State? Did he actually get the money he wanted? Yeah, he My did. guess to that is yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he didn't quite go the long road like Caden Proctor. <laughs> But, but, but he also, hey, I mean, to be honest, to be fair to him, he's put on, like, apparently 15 to 20 pounds. He's okay. bigger. Right. And he's uh, he's ready to go, man. Mm -hmm. He's well, going to be a good player. They probably said, hey, we can do something if you do something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's how it goes. Uh, all right, that's good stuff there. Uh, we'll try and keep an eye on Tallahassee, Gainesville, Coral Gables, uh, Athens, and all of them as we talk college football because we know you're out there. You miss it. You love it. You want more of it. Did I just write a country song? I might have. That's probably already been done. We do have yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a, yeah. Speaking, yeah, I think that one's been done. Speaking yeah. of uh, country. I, like it, I love it. I want some more of it. Speaking of country music, we <laughs> have uh, we have Stone Temple Pilots tickets to give away. Yeah, uh, just because I know it has yeah. grinded the gears of the Nooners driving around. That's not heavy metal, Mia. You don't know heavy metal. Listen, Stone Temple Pilots, it's tickets. JJ, we have two more chances to win. You want to do it right here? We'll do it coming back. All yeah. right, I like that. On the way back, we will give those tickets away. Again, two more chances to win those tickets in late August here in Duval. XL Primetime rolling on from the Players' Grill in Mandarin. We'll be here till 3. Make sure you stop on by. Cruising with XL Primetime in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. What makes a Honda certified pre-owned vehicle so special? 182-point inspection, 24-7 roadside assistance, first-year free oil changes, and a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty for carefree driving back by American Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today. Are you embarrassed by your ugly, cracked concrete driveway? Need to enhance your home's curb appeal? StoneCore on Phillips Highway is your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Replacing with new stone pavers will transform your driveway into a stunning work of art. Say goodbye to unsightly concrete and hello to beautiful, durable pavers that last for years. Visit StoneCore today and let's beautify your home together. StoneCore.co. We do outdoors better. Mia here, and if you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, bet the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. I didn't steer you wrong yesterday, did I, Nooners? UConn, big winners on the hardwood in the opening round of the Sweet 16, or should I say opening slate of games. Tonight, Marquette, a three-point favorite, according to my bookie, over our sweet prince, our cult hero, DJ Burns. Do you think the Wolfpack have one more in them? I do. I say it'll be a close one. I say the Wolfpack, the 11 seed, pull off the upset over the Golden Eagles. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit all the way up to 1000 bucks. Put in $200 and get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. The best part about my bookie, you can bet on anything from anytime from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today only with my bookie. Let's fire up the flavor and ignite those appetites. Let's slow down and smell the barbecue. Because all your favorites are smoked for hours and ready for eating when you are. From our famous ribs to slow smoked pork. Enjoy some perfection by the plateful, safely in our dining room or in the comfort of your home. With curbside pickup, drive through and delivery. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. Lamb of God and Mastodon live. Celebrating 20 years of Ashes of the Wake and Leviathan. July 23rd, Daly's Place. With special guests, Carrie King and Malevolence. Lamb of God and Mastodon's Ashes of Leviathan Tour. Tickets on sale now at LiveNation.com. This date in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On March 29, 1982, UNC beats Georgetown in the NCAA Men's Tournament. Future Hall of Famer James Worthy is MVP. When my wrist pain was acting up and I needed help, I took Dan Hicken's advice and headed over to see the experts at Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. This is Stuart Moore with the PGA Tour. I highly recommend Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Whenever you have a need, they took great care of me. They'll take great care of you. This is Dr. Kevin Murphy. The next time you need orthopedic care, you can rely on our team at Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Hi, I'm Sean Monahan from Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach. 
Since 1977, we've been Jacksonville's family jeweler where our true specialty is engagement rings and custom jewelry design. And now, buy your diamond engagement ring at Monahan's and get any diamond wedding band and men's wedding bands for 50% off. Come in and be treated like family for one of the most important purchases of your life. Buy your diamond engagement ring right now at Monahan's and get any diamond wedding band and gents band for 50% off. Come to Monahan Jewelers in Atlantic Beach or book an appointment at MonahanJewelry.com. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? Yes, your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero res. Spelled forward or backwards it's the right way to clean. C-E-R-O-R-E-C Zero res. At Duck Duck Rooter we understand plumbing issues can be a real inconvenience for your building or business and we're here to help. We can handle all kinds of plumbing jobs, including broken pipes, clogged drains, line jetting, installing water heaters, and full repipes. Need a camera inspection or a smoke test? Yes, DuckDuckRooter does that too. Plus, our lift station services include inspections, monitoring, cleaning, and repairs. When you're stuck, call the Duck. 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. 1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Stone Temple Pilots. The Stone Temple Pilots, Leon. Did you know who the Stone Temple Pilots were uh, before before we came on the air today? Uh, you know Stone Temple I, Pilots. I've dipped and dabbled, yes. Okay. I've heard a couple of their songs. Okay, you've heard a couple of their uh, songs. What would you classify them as? I've never actually had to classify them for today. Grunge. Grunge. Uh, grunge, yeah. Grunge. grunge yeah. When I hear grunge, I, I know it's not heavy metal, but it's, it's hair, is it not? No, no, like we no, said, hair, no. hair, like, oh, they all have hair. What's Long the difference hair, between grunge and emo, then? I don't know. What the oh, my know. God. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Uh, this is quite the debate. <laughs> all right, we have uh, a uh, pair of tickets right now to give away uh, to Stone Temple Pilots Live at Daly's Place, August 30th. Be car number four right now or go to livenation.com for tickets. And by the way, they may have Stone Temple Pilots playing here uh, at Players Grill Mandarin Music. Bingo! Starting Next Thursday, well, this coming Thursday, April 4th, 6 o'clock. So they have that along with all their other great uh, things that they got going on each and every night here at Players Grill Mandarin. Live music tonight. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're going to be hanging out tonight. You can come on by. Uh, music starts at 8 o'clock. You'll certainly enjoy it. Uh, Claire Vandiver tonight at 8, and then the band be easy next Friday night at 8 o'clock. Before we send Leon off for the day and welcome in Coach Campo for his Friday spotlight here on XL Primetime, let's get back to that conversation regarding culture. It's one that we've had for several weeks now as the Jacksonville Jaguars try to rebound from a disappointing finish to 2023 and how they can restructure this roster in 2024. Now, in the words of Jeff Fisher, to look ahead, you have to look back or something like that, right? To go back, you need to look forward. I believe that's some some sort of quote from Jeff Fisher. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, Titans trying to tie a couple things together. Let's look back because I think as we try to formulate and try to specify what a culture would look like for this Jags team, the last time that I felt like there was a tangible culture in Jacksonville was Saxonville. Anybody else agree? 2017, 2018? Yeah. Was that the last time that this team felt like it had an identity, that you could say – this is who you're going to play. That's when you hear the Jaguars, we, this is what you think Defensively, of. yes. Yeah, defensively. Yeah, defensively. Yeah. We were fooled. We were tricked. They were one-hit wonders. They were one-hit wonders. They absolutely were because the, the next year, going into the next year, they were Super Bowl favorites mm-hmm. on, a lot of, on a lot of channels. They were Super Bowl favorites, and they started the season 3-1. and one. 
and you thought, hey, this team is on the trajectory to greatness. Beat New England. Beat, beat New England. Tommy. Absolutely. Yeah. Although, by the end of that year in 17, they were running the ball physically. Yeah, yeah. No, Second no, half of the season, the end of the year, they were they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they had 17. an identity on offense, too. Yeah, I was talking about no, 18. Yeah, in 18, when they, 18, they, 18 they came in. They just right. Run the, the way, ball, play great defense. Yeah, yeah, by the way, the end of 22, I thought they had culture. I thought they had an identity. I really did, okay? Trevor played clean football, 12 touchdowns, one pick. You had guys making plays. You had the defensive guys step up and make plays. So I thought the identity was – there that it was that's the hatching of, of, of well, the you know, Doug Peterson. Where, it's, where we you can ask, yeah. Where we yeah, well, yeah. more do you, maybe, we can ask Davis maybe. too. Is it's it's much more difficult to deal with success than it is adversity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way more difficult. Interesting. Well, you would agree with that as a former yeah. player, wouldn't you? Yeah. Because you get you get you get beside yourself. You get a little fat uh, and happy. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. You get comfortable. You get complacent. Yeah. You My become, question become would a fat cat. Yeah. My question would just be, what is what was that identity in 2022? Just the the, ra- the, the cardiac cats, rally cats, young well, up and coming. Was there a way to uh, – And could you put it into words what that culture was? Because well, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't classify it as physical. No, well, what I what I what I saw. Although they went it up, started they with went Trevor. up to Nashville and were a little physical in that game. I'll yeah, tell you yeah. that. It started with Trevor uh, after London. Remember after mm-hmm. London he had a, he had yep. a bad game mm-hmm. and he said I can't. I, just can't, can't, can't I just can't continue. Right, it does help that he was playing as, as well as any quarterback in the league. Absolutely. In the last seven games, when he so came yeah, out and he said, "Hey, listen, this can't continue. I can't keep playing like this. I'm costing us football games." I was like, "Wow." Now it's one thing, to, one thing to say it, but then show it. Right. And then down the stretch, and that run that they made, who was playing better than Trevor? Not many. Mahomes. Maybe Mahomes. Maybe. I mean, maybe Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, Trevor was like twelve, and, like you said, twelve and one down that stretch. I always say that two thousand two team and my that two thousand two twenty two team mm-hmm. had more heart and desire than the twenty three team. Yeah, and to look at the scoreboard and see double digit trailing, and it was as much as as much as twenty seven points, seventeen points, ten points, whatever it was, and they clawed their way back against the Raiders, against the Bro, Ravens. If this team against... was down twenty three nothing in twenty twenty three or twenty seven nothing, they'd have lost fifty to nothing. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah, probably. Would have been like the Patriots. So, game. so I guess the, the biggest thing for me is, like I said, I thought the culture was hatched. I thought Doug Peterson, because uh, like what he was able to do <laughs> up in Philly, it looked like he had captured it down here in Duval. What happened well, to it? Well, I, I I think this. I mean, they didn't know how to like we were just talking about. It. They didn't know how to handle success. Mm-hmm. They couldn't. They the prosperity. They they couldn't. They didn't know how because when when you're all of a sudden when you're the laughing stock of the NFL, where you're the pawn of jokes and stuff, and all of a sudden you become the darling, the favorites, the number one seed. How how do you let that go? How, I mean, how do you let going from eight and three, number one seed, to just imploding and not making the playoffs? I, it's never happened to me. I, I this is, I'm in rare air right now. Yeah, I, I've never I've never had the situation like we were good, we we finished good. right, and we were bad, we finished good. So I was, you you were good and you finished bad out the playoffs. Well, let's go back to 2017 then, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. they started off like they are the Super Bowl favorites, three and one in the month of September, and things slowly devolved over the next few months. And perhaps again, it was because of missteps in the culture. We teased it at the beginning of the one o'clock hour. DJ Chark, former Jaguar, former Panther, former Lion. I don't think he has signed with a new team yeah. yet was on the Marlon Humphrey, fellow LSU alums, podcast. And he was asked about a difficult situation, a toxic situation he may have been in in his NFL experience. This may come as no surprise, but he references his rookie season, the 2018 Jaguars. This might be like OTAs. The D-line would be beefing sometimes with, like, the corners. They had a really good defense, Saxonville. The linemen are like, we getting all these picks and takeaways because we getting to the quarterback. Corners are like, y'all getting these sacks because we covering everybody. Is it the D-line and making this defense good or the DBs? That's toxic right there now, y'all. Nah, that was... Wow, we usually just be like, you know, we working together. That was A.J. Booyah and Jalen Ramsey, though. It was tough. That was... They, that y'all had... But right. that D-line Calais. was good, too, though. Exactly. It was. It was. We had Calais, Malik, Yannick. Well, let me just say this from my experience of being the By Lions. the way, real quick, Marlon Humphrey's an Alabama guy, so mm-hmm. that was oh. blasphemous what you just said there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my bad. For all, for, all the, for all the LSU people running around I'm still, out there. I'm still, in, I'm still on Ireland time. Grant me some grace, please. Big Vic is freaking out right now. He might come after you, actually. Well, let me just say this. Thank you. By the way, his podcast logo is yellow and purple. I mean, maybe it's because of the Ravens, but I'm just saying. 
Well, listen, I've been in a lot of NFL locker rooms, and let me just say this. DBs run their mouth, okay? <laughs> no, no matter what locker room they're in, and you got to understand, they're like a swarm of bees. They have right? to, though. They're like a swarm of bees, all right? Yeah. I, they, 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 they run in packs of t- 10 to 12 people, all right? And every one of them talks trash, all right? So <laughs> well, you all I, throw so them out there on an island. What do you expect them to do? I know. They got to. They, they got, got to be guy. that way. Absolutely. They got no choice. So I'm not surprised this happened. I've been in locker rooms where DBs run their mouth, and they say, hey, we run the show. And then we go over there, and in their side, we, we put a whooping on them and put them back in order. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, listen, I, 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 I don't say it was toxic. I mean, to say it was toxic, I mean, you don't have that kind of success that you had. Is he talking about the 2017 season? Yeah. 2018. 2018. 2018 yeah. when they came oh, out. 2018, they say it was toxic. Well, it, it, it could get out of hand, but I mean. Well, see, the thing is, is that. You got, a, you, got a, you got a room full of alpha males, you yeah. know. And, but the thing is, is that I would look at you guys, and we're talking the offensive line when, yeah. when the franchise got rolling early, mm-hmm. you and Big Bo and all of them, right? You worked in concert with your quarterback. You worked in concert with your yeah. run game. Same thing on the other side of the ball. They all worked in concert with one another. <clears throat> yet the thing that DJ Chark is talking about is the D-line wanted some credit, more credit, and the secondary wanted some credit, more credit. And, and so instead of saying, hey, we're all good – yeah. They started divvying it up. Well, how much and, more and credit do you problem. want than Saxonville? That's yeah. the thing. Uh, uh, you got, you got, you got a yeah. catchphrase. What else? The do you unspoken, want? the unspoken part of that conversation, from my recollection, from being in that 2018 locker room, was that there were two camps, mm. and the two camps just so happened to be those who followed a certain defensive back in Jalen Ramsey, and those who followed a certain defensive lineman in Calais Campbell, and it was either you. Follow Calais, who's the company line, and we're all in this together, and we're going to figure it out. The corporate, corporate the way, was actually a word that was used back I, then. I, I, there I, there I were players. Yep. There were players in that locker room criticizing Calais Campbell for well, for operating like that. And then there were those that followed Jalen, Len, Leonard Fournette. Not no, not no. even that. I would the, the rebels, the rebels. I would say no, because it was life, like what circle yeah. did I just see Leonard Fournette in, in a picture on on X? It wasn't the same circle. That was another one, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm remembering it now. You don't remember. want to, yeah, the, I, yeah. He did he, go to LSU, did, yeah, unlike yeah, Marlon yeah, Humphrey. Yeah, so, at least there's that. Let's I'm not go down that road, all right? <laughs> and I say thug life in, in a complimentary way because you, you need Jay, some Jalen Ramsey. Hell yes. Room. Absolutely. Yes. Need you need like yes. six or seven guys in I would in rather locker, have someone like room. him in my locker room than not have him in my locker room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah you want all chippy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that, right? If you can talk the talk and you can walk the walk, I'm friends of yours. But there's yeah. also no problem with guys no. like being a little chippy in the locker room, right? I have right? no problem with it. With right. Confidence. I, I like, yeah, By the way, right. Jalen is pretty much on his – on will be on to his fourth team yeah. when it's all said and done because he's already kind of asking out again, mm. you know, a little bit, saying goodbye to Miami well, and all that. Bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> no. No? Where do you think he's going to go? I always thought maybe I Nashville. Say, hell yes, bring him back is what I say. Yes. Uh, that would be – I would not. I would not have a problem. He has to Listen, come in. Listen, the sound bites alone. He has to come in cheaper than he expects uh, to come in, though. I can tell you that. He might want to come back and help us win one. Yeah, yeah. He's got the ring already. <laughs> I just always felt like he would end up back at home, especially with all his talk of no state income tax, mm-hmm. and so either mm-hmm. Nashville, Florida, Texas, like. Yeah. He he was very specific about the no state income tax. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. then went ahead and accepted a trade to Los Angeles and mm-hmm. had his taxes just, you know. Well, I'll be true. I can tell you that I, I ruined the 2018 season for the Jaguar. You did. I, I, well, no, I did. No, no, no doubt. No, because after the game, I was at the Patriots game, right, when we won and we celebrated like we won the Super Bowl. I was outside and I had two cigars. I was waiting for Keenan. And I said, Keenan, congratulations. I gave him a cigar and we lit up one. Uh, we lit one like we had just won the su- – I, I did it. I ruined it. One quarter of the season <laughs> was complete. At the quarter pole, I did, you bro. said – Yes. You crowned him. I crowned him. Too early, bro. That's crazy. I did it, man. All right. Listen, on that note, yep. you got to get out. I got to go. I'm out of here. <laughs> you got to go. got to go. All right, Vic Sars, thanks, man. Enjoy the weekend. All it. right, so he heads out. We'll say hello to Coach Dave Campo. He will join us, and we'll talk some more Jaguar ball, culture, fit, and all that kind of stuff. And he always likes to chime in on some NCAA basketball as well. Players Grill Mandarin, you can drop on by here. Enjoy your cold one. Enjoy your delicious lunch. Don't forget, they've got entertainment tonight beginning at 8 o'clock. Claire Vandiver on the next week is the band Be Easy. 8 o'clock performances on Friday night, and they have cranked up their music bingo starting next Thursday night at 6 o'clock, April 4th. So make sure you mark that down. 
So we know Coach is going to jump in on the defense, going to jump in on the draft, and then he'll jump in on some hoops, which I hope he watched some of that last night. we got to get into these games. He may be boycotting ever since the Jayhawks were bowing yes. out last weekend. But we have got to at least get into a couple of these games coming up tonight because there's definitely going to be some action on them. Can Creighton keep it going? Uh, is Houston kind of on the ropes? Duke is a four-point dog to the Houston Cougars. Did you hear my my, my bookie mm -hmm. read? Mm -hmm. Our sweet prince, D.J. Burns, the cult hero of March mm -hmm. Madness, plays tonight our future swing tackle of your Jacksonville Jaguars. So Pay you, homage to the Wolf him. Pack. Yeah, you got him. <laughs> NC State is a seven-point dog. Uh, my to bookie's Marquette. got him at three. Three now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. So that is There a, is some movement in the desert, folks. I'm going to have to check on that. It is XL primetime. Riding in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios. XL Primetime on 1010XL. Travis Pastrana here from Nitro Circus Live. And you're listening to 1010XL, 92.5 FM, Jack Sports Radio. Top Dog Tavern is your gathering place for family and friends, offering something for everyone. Want a delicious meal served with a smile? We have you covered. Shareable appetizers. Hot and crispy wings, juicy tavern burgers, fresh salads, plus a large craft beer selection. And there is nowhere better to watch all the big games than on our multiple TVs. Enjoy great food, cold drinks, and good times at Top Dog Tavern, located in Bartram Park off Old St. Augustine Road. After morning services are done, all the eggs have been found, and Easter lunch has been enjoyed, the sales department at Arlington Toyota will open its doors to you. That's right, from 2 p.m. through 8 p.m. on Easter Sunday, you can finish off your day by driving home a brand new ride from Arlington. New Toyotas, certified pre-owned Toyotas, premium pre-owned vehicles of all makes and models. It's all at Arlington and ready to fill your Easter basket. And remember, every new purchase comes with Arlington's lifetime warranty. That's unlimited time and miles. Shopping pre-owned that you could buy with total confidence thanks to my friends at Arlington's 30-day exchange program. That's 30 days to love your pre-owned purchase or exchange it for one that you do. Mark your calendars and make your plans now. After Sunday service, Easter dinner, and the egg hunt, bring the family in to hunt for a new ride from Arlington Toyota. The sales department opens 2 p.m. through 8 p.m. Easter Sunday. Shop in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com. And happy Easter from everyone at Arlington Toyota. Bet, bet, bet on the ball game. Get your money down. Money lines, totals, and parlays. We're cashing tickets all around. It's baseball betting season, and VEASAN's MLB betting guide is a home run for bettors. Download your free special edition of the guide, featuring a betting preview of the Atlanta Braves and Tampa Bay Rays at 1010XL.com. That's 1010XL.com. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars, WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach, WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. Seminole Hard Rock Tampa is excited to bring you live craps, roulette, and sports betting. All under one roof, hotter than the Florida sun. Feel the luck of the dice, watch the roulette wheel spin, and scream for your touchdown as the big screen comes alive. Dine like a rock star, sip cocktails that shimmer, then dive into the heart of Las Vegas right here in Tampa Bay. Live craps, roulette, sports betting is here. Get in on the action now, only at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Tampa, located off of I-4 near I-75. Gambling problem? Call 1-888-ADMINUTE. Breaking news, Jacksonville. Play it again, sports is back. We are proud to be opening a brand new store on Merrill Road, but we need your help. We are currently stocking up and we need your gently used sports and fitness equipment. Play it again, sports offers cash on the spot for all your youth gear. We buy baseball, softball, football, hockey, lacrosse, golf, water sports. You name it, we buy it. Turn that gear into cash at Play It Again Sports Jacksonville on Merrill Road near 295 in the Merrill Station Shopping Plaza. Save big during MVP's bonus days at Lowe's with limited time deals on everything you need. Right now, buy one select DeWalt 20 volt max tool. Get one DeWalt 20 volt max power stack battery two pack free, a $179 value. Plus, save $20 on a select bucket of Deck Plus wood screws. Find these deals and more in store and online today because Lowe's knows savings. Lowe's knows pros. Valid 318 through 329 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. 
There are only a few things the government does well, and processing passports is not one of them. Hello, it's Congressman Aaron Bean, and taking care of constituents in Northeast Florida is a top priority. If you need help with that passport, the VA, Social Security, or any federal agency, call my office, 904 954-9550 or visit bean.house.gov. I'm Congressman Aaron Bean and serving you is what we do. Paid for by official funds authorized by the House of Representatives. Pull. Put your team together for Operation New Uniforms Veterans Cup clay shoot on Friday, April 5th. This year's fundraiser will feature celebrity shooters, great food, prizes, and of course, bragging rights for the winners. Enjoy a day on the range and support Operation New Uniform's mission to empower transitioning service members, veterans, and military spouses. Find their new uniform in the business world. Go to ONUVets.org. That's ONUVets.org today. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. This is your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist Local Sports Update. I'm Andrew Gibson for Tintin XL. The Jaguars have announced a contract extension for a key member of the defense. Hey, it's Foye Lewican, just re signed back here in Jacksonville, excited for the 2024 season. Duval! From the man himself, Foye Aluakun gets a four-year contract extension with the Jaguars, and according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, it's worth $45 million. The extension has a maximum value of $48 million. Since arriving in Jacksonville in 2022, Aluakun leads the NFL with 357 tackles. It's 69 degrees at 2 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. XL Primetime's Coach Dave Campo is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Online at BoldCityAC.com. We've got our head coach hanging out with his 2 o'clock hour Players Grill Mandarin. He is ready to bring a little magic onto the program. Here's you should see him, back. JJ. He's got like a he's got a fresh cut. cut. You got you got pomade in there? Is that what you have right now? Yeah, I, I got whatever they she puts on it. You know, they cut it down and then she slicks it on. You know and I'm ready to roll. JJ, magic. he's full on eyes on right now. <laughs> Are we sure that Claire? Or he Claire, walked out uh, of the, he walked out of that early bird special. You know, right. on the Seinfeld episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a toothpick like Jack, you just eating him a big old meal. Are we sure that Claire Van Diver's playing yeah. tonight, yeah. or is it a Coach, coach? Campo yeah, who's going to be. be taking center stage and, here at the yeah. Players Grill in Mandarin? Yeah. Well, I kind of like the I like the uh, the head coach. I think he's at TCU now. That has a real slick back oh, hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamie, like oh Jamie Dixon. Dixon, yeah, yeah. I, I, I well, like look, Dixon. So you, you look like you just walked off the Goodfellas set right now. <laughs> You're all fired up and ready to go. Yeah, that's what I ran into, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and I just ran into. To a guy, I mean, every everybody shows up at uh, at the grill. Mm-hmm. Uh, guy from it's where the neighborhood right, meets, coach. It's where, it's the, where the neighborhood, neighborhood meets. meets. Yeah. Uh, it's a guy from the University of Miami was a student there when I was <laughs> coaching there. Very cool. Very JJ, cool. JJ, you better save that. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. All right, listen, we have got all sorts of things to get into. We might as well at least touch off uh, the conversation with you with the foyer. A little con extension. You just heard Gibby's update, just talking about what it could be worth. But it's a nice contract, and it's a guy. It's 
A, it frees up some cash. There's always that. you got to do your salary cap math. But at the same time, it signals a leadership quality that Foye Luakon has shown on the defensive side. They want, they, want to, they want to reward him. They want to keep him around. Smart. Mm-hmm. Character. Yeah. Both of those things he has. There's no question. Yale graduate. Uh, you know, and, and I've had a chance to just say hello to him. I don't mm-hmm. really know him that well. Right. But I can tell that the guy is sharp. And mm-hmm. and uh, and from what I was listening to you guys on the way over here, yeah. talking about the fact that he was one of the guys that was in the locker room, is willing to step up and, yeah. you know, take responsibility and talk to everybody else about taking responsibility. I think he's just one of the guys that they want in this program, you yeah. know, the, to get to, with the younger players, and you can't let guys like that out as long as the guy's playing okay. Right. And he's he he's not a great player, but he's a pretty darn good player, yeah, and productive. I think that's what they need. On yeah. Which brings us back to conversation topic number one of today's program, Coach. Does this mean, is this a signaling by the Jags top brass that they quote-unquote missed on Chad Muma because he isn't ready to take over that spot versus – you have a good player in Foye Lewican and you just want to keep him. Well, I, I think it's both. I, to be honest with you, I, I think when they took Muma, he was uh, uh, with that in mind. In other words, he's going to be the 100%. next Mike linebacker. Right. But also, he was probably pretty highly rated on the board. He was the best player available is what Trent Bulky uh, uh, said that's, that night. That's what I, and, and, again, sometimes that works. Best sometimes player in another doesn't. position I've already drafted at. Yep. yep. That, no, and, and that can happen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and now, the, the my problem. problem with that, my problem with that is <laughs> it's the best p- player available if you, in your mind, you have three or four guys with the same grade mm-hmm. and it's not a position that you need. Right. Uh, or it is a position mm-hmm. you need. Excuse mm-hmm. right. me. Right. So I'm not sure that was the case. But, but as far as, you know, I think they made a decision yeah. that he was going to be a pretty good player, and he still may be. Sure, you sure. Just remember now, uh, that doesn't mean that they can't get rid of a Luicon right down right. the road financially. And, and, and we are and going through away. a defensive coordinator change, and so there's at the very least it's going to be a different look. Yeah. You needed more linebackers back then. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't convince me that he was the only player on their board that had that grade. Right. To your right. point, Coach, right. that there right. had to be a couple of other positions yeah. that had graded I, out. I think they'd have to look at it. like At this point right now, We like we're looking at it is – Maybe they made a mistake, Mm -hmm. you know, but he is a good special teams player. Mm -hmm. And you know how I feel. Once he's on the ball club, I don't care where he was picked or whether we made a mistake or not. If he's doing something for the football team and giving them an opportunity to win games, then that's who he's ours. You know, I worry about the guys that I took, Mm -hmm. not the guys that I lost. Yeah. Plus, quite frankly, Alucon's played well two years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's and, to be rewarded. He may not be all pro, but he's yeah. played well. Yeah, he yep. kind of so got he, shafted He's a led bit. the league in tackles. Yeah, he's got so shafted he on the Pro Bowl voting, I think. I, yeah. I, I think you I, you keep him because he's playing well. That's, uh, it, he, it, to doesn't, me, it doesn't mean you didn't blow it on Moon because you did. I'm not saying Moon was a bad player, but mm-hmm. you should have picked someone else. Yeah. But at the same time, he's played really, really well. Yeah, and I think when you look at Aluakon, to me, uh, he's like uh, the small linebackers we had back in the day in Dallas. Mm-hmm. They get some guys up in front of him, then he's even a better player because right. instead he might make the same amount of tackles, but they're going to be closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're not all going to be running a guy down for a six, seven yard gain, which is co- that's counted in those solo tackles. And like you know? we were saying too, coach, when he's not having to line up the linebackers next to him and the defensive players in front exactly. of him like he was, because you can speak to it. You saw it those last Absolutely. few weeks. He was not only having to tell Devin Lloyd where to go, he was having to make sure the gaps of the defensive front Correct. were sound. Correct. That's not the job of the linebacker. Absolutely. The job no, of the if, coach. If, we're, what, if, if we're now year two into Devin Lloyd late season and someone's trying to tell him where to go and yeah. where to play and what mm-hmm. position to be in, that's a big problem. Yeah, and, and by the way, pair that up with Kyle Whittingham. I would have thought – that he would have been in a better position coming out, especially with how highly regarded he was coming out of Utah. That's a surprise yeah, but they to they just me. moved him all over the place at Utah. There, there's, a, there's, quarterback. Yeah, there was yeah. a problem with the teaching mm-hmm. 
of the defensive okay. staff. Let's right. be could honest. They be just got too. rid of the defensive it staff. It could be that, too. He yeah. had great teaching yeah. at Utah, yeah. and the teaching necessarily wasn't here. And, and to be honest with you, I thought he improved last year. Mm-hmm. Talk about Devin, Devin Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, he did, yes. You know, in other words, it isn't like uh, at the end of the year he was the same player as he was the first year coming right. in. Right. So, to me, I think the, the jury is out. I think he's athletically good enough to be he, as good as anybody. Yeah, he league. played better. But in the end, still was having to get lined up. This right. is late in the right. in the second season. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, there's pluses and minuses. The instruction, I 100% agree with you because you're going to have we you hope all the Duval hopes you're going to have guys that are coaching them up that are going to make them more accountable. Yeah, you are a, a big believer in that. Plan. That the, the the actual teaching on the field of the defense was a huge problem last year. And and to be honest with you, I I have an affinity for guys coming out of the college level. Mm-hmm. Like House, for example, the linebacker coach, Mm -hmm. in comparison to some of the pro guys that have become former coaches, former Mm -hmm. players. I I just have an affinity for guys that that had to do it by teaching. Sure. By developing guys in the college level. They're your best teachers in a lot of ways. So I'm hopeful mm-hmm. that this guy is going to be a, a, a good teacher along clobbered. with the rest of the guys. There. Yeah, you he know. got clobbered as a D.C., but if he is a, a better just position yeah. coach, yeah. then, yeah, that, exactly. that'll, that'll exactly. be a success. Because that was the first thing that when, <laughs> when people saw that hire, that's the first yeah, thing they well, noticed. It, but, uh, and really, that honestly, that's not uh, an evaluation. A, de- a defensive coordinator is a little bit like a head coach. Yeah. The guys that are doing the business of, of winning are the guys that are teaching the, the mm-hmm. individual guys how to right. play football. Yeah. That's, to me, anyway. The D.C. is just a guy that's hoping the position coaches correct. are doing what he's, what he's told them. And to. hires correct. those to yeah. – helps hire those position yeah. coaches. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. absolutely. Exactly. To ensure, again, it's it's part of workflow. It's it Take the football out of it. It's, it's like management. any organization. It's management. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and you, exactly. Yeah, if you're going to wear the hard hat – But I'm you, hoping. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that this guy's going to be a lot better than the guy that was here. I don't know that. Right. But I – from what I heard of how things were operating, I'm not sure that everything was getting across mm-hmm. to the guys. And I have kind of an affinity for college guys that have mm-hmm. to have but, to teach guys. So when you were running your room, okay, right. when you were just the D.C., not the head coach, when you were running your defensive room, what was the way you made it clear to these guys, this is A, B, and C is how we're doing it? Well, we just – that's it. You just said it right there. The, my favorite guy of all was Mike Zimmer. Because Mike Zimmer, for example, had was an idea guy, okay, uh, he, and and I would listen to his ideas because he had good ideas. Mm-hmm. But when it came right down to it, w- when I said, he was your "Okay, that's coach, great," right? It, he was a secondary. Secondary, okay. But w- I said, when it, when it was all said and done, after all the talking and this and that, I said, "Okay, great." Now, here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> you got and, good ideas, and, but this and, is what's right, happening. This is how it's going. I hear what right? you're saying, but right. this is and, and a lot of it was his idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. In other words, it wasn't all mine. Right. right. You took it, things he was saying. Absolutely. And then you came up with one Here, concise here's message. Here's what we're doing. Right. That's it. Okay. And, and the thing that made him good was he would put his ego back down mm-hmm. and do exactly what we wanted him to, wanted right. to do. All right, so let's make this the 10-10 take uh, right now because it's going to come back to the D coordinator right now. Now, Joe C's 10-10 take. Slow smoked and served up by Sonny's Barbecue, local pit master since 68. you got a bunch of ball to watch tonight. If you're heading home, you're hungry, head on to any one of your area Sonny's. Pick up some great barbecue. You might even order enough to have some leftovers. It's always good. Check out any one of your area Sonny's when you are hungry for some barbecue. Uh, I've used this phrase, uh, the hire of the defensive coordinator may may be the best free agent that – Trent Baalke and Doug Peterson decided on because of all the things we just talked about. If he is an if he is a guy that can come in, can game plan, can command his coaches to teach and do a good job. In other words, it's still his. It's still his job. He's the defensive coordinator to make all these position coaches better and make all these players better. That will make him a very, very good hire if he makes those other hires that he had better. That is the ten ten take because Ryan Nielsen can have that impact. Uh, real quick thought on that, Coach, before we hit the break. Well, I, I'll say it very quickly. Uh, just uh, I think one of the pluses is that I, I think the last defensive coordinator was doing what somebody else mm-hmm. did 
Nielsen's going to do what he did. Okay. And okay. I think that in itself is a plus. All right, excellent. We'll keep that going. You guys can hit the text line 641-1010. Jump in on that conversation and drop by Players Grill Mandarin right here on San Jose. The First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. Tired of dealing with clogged drains? What about those bad smells coming from your pipes? No matter how big or small your commercial or residential project may be, my friends at DuckDuckRooter can handle it. Contact them today for all your plumbing, septic, and air conditioning needs at 904-862-6769. And while I have your attention, DuckDuckRooter is also hiring plumbers. They offer excellent weekly pay, health insurance, paid holidays, 401k, and more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com and they will call you for an interview. What the? Jacksonville Sports Radio. What is this place? This is 1010XL. Here's Linda Beaver. Did you hear what's happening? Beaver Toyota and Beaver Chevrolet are spring cleaning. New inventory on the ground means we need to make more room. Take advantage of huge savings on thousands of vehicles priced to sell. New and pre-owned prices have been reduced and all sales associates have been instructed to give maximum value on all trades. But you better hurry, the best deals go first. Head to Beaver Toyota in St. Augustine. Or Beaver Chevrolet in Jacksonville to take advantage of our spring cleaning sale. We're here to wow you. Patriot Roofing Services, specializing in all types of commercial and residential roofing and repairs, gutters, sun tubes, skylights as well. 10-year workmanship warranty, financing available, military and senior citizen discounts, no subcontractors. Mention this ad at the time of the estimate and receive $500 off any new re-roof. Call Mark today, 982-4052, 982-4052, licensed and insured. Race into gate for big offers. By big, we mean great deals on Red Bull and a chance to win tickets to the big race coming to Miami May 3rd through 5th. Buy two 8.4-ounce cans of Red Bull, get one free. And if you're a MyGate Rewards member, you are automatically entered for a chance to win race tickets. Not a member? Download the Gate app and sign up today. See store for details. Go from good to gate. The Wing Madness menu at Boston's Restaurant and Sports Bar is a slam dunk. Sink your teeth into our mouth-watering rib or cauliflower wings, available in 16 amazing flavors. Try their trash can nachos, layers of crispy tortilla chips piled high with all the fixings, and their flavorful, addictive corn wings. You'll be hoarding these like a sneaky technical foul. Get 50% off bone-in or boneless wings on our loyalty program. All the details and restrictions at bostons.com today. Mia O'Brien is going to be the first woman president of the United States of America. Catch me weekdays on XL Primetime from 12 to 3 and Tuesday nights on Helmets and Heels. And she could run later this year even, and I would vote for her. All Things Mia are driven by Arlington Toyota on 1010XL. When it's time for the March Mania brackets, the bus wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The Mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. <laughs> Bonus offers. And when the madness starts, it's Cinderella. <laughs> Man steps under the... <laughs> Bet US always has your back with back to back to back 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits and even 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game. Join today. BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. Dave Binion here with my son Ammon, who is the air duct cleaning manager at Zero Res. So, Ammon, you may notice a little rattle in my voice and some puffiness in my eyes. That's because allergy season is coming on. Can Zero Res help? Yes. Your health has a lot to do with the air you breathe. A clean and healthy home begins with clean air. At Zero Res, we can help clean the air in your home by cleaning your air ducts, cleaning the coils in your HVAC units, and fogging the system with a powerful antimicrobial that helps kill and control the growth of microorganisms in your air. We also have options for maintaining your clean air with our excellent inline air purifier and UV lights that will help keep your system clean and healthy. At Zero Res, we are more than just air duct cleaners. We're a clean air specialist. Have Zero Res air duct specialists out and right now we'll give you $50 off your air duct cleaning and while we're at it we'll give you $50 off your dryer vent cleaning. Zero res. Spelled forward or backwards it's the right way to clean. Lauren Brooks here from Mayport CNC Fisheries. Growing up at the beach, I know good shrimp and oysters when I see them. They're local and they're fresh. That's why Mayport CNC Fisheries is my go-to for both. They have local shrimp in stock seven days a week. Eat like a local at Mayport CNC Fisheries. Time now for a medical recap. 
A health and wellness tip from Jaguars head team physician, Dr. Kevin Kaplan. Establishing a regular sleeping pattern is crucial for your well-being. This includes going to bed at roughly the same time every night and waking up around the same time every morning. You may even consider turning off all electronic devices an hour before bedtime. Ever wonder why you can't fall asleep after staring at your phone right before bed? Studies show that the light from your phone actually decreases melatonin production, therefore causing disruptions to your sleep throughout the night. Get some rest before the big game. Go Jags. Friday on the Frangie Show, tune in for the House Call segment brought to you by Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute Rehab. Join the discussion as a JOI expert tells us about baseball and softball injuries. JOI, where the pros go. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. is XL Primetime, brought to you by Florida Home AC. Now that's cool on 1010XL. All right, let's do it one more time. We don't have a ton of time, so I will spare you all my musical history or attempts at trying to identify this band. JJ, remind the folks at home what they can call in and win. Yes, yeah, 641 right now. I got a pair of tickets, the last pair of the day, to see Stone Temple Pilots at Daly's Place August 30th. If you don't win them here, you can go to LiveNation.com, and they'll have them there. So be caller number four right now, 641-1010. That is 641-1010. And for those of you on the text line brought to you by Lifetime Enclosures asking, no, we cannot block phone numbers that you call into. Text line, perhaps, yes, but not on your actual cell phone that you're calling JJ at. So everyone is eligible to win. If you have technical issues, let us know. Maybe I'll get Richie on it. Or maybe we can per- call Verizon for you or, or something like that. The problem is now seeing or. Stone Temple Pilots now is kind of like seeing Alice in Chains now. It's not mm-hmm. the same thing. It's just not the same <coughs> thing. Uh, I beg to differ. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jay. Okay, it's let me tell you something. Thing. You go see ELO when they're 45 flipping years into their Jeff AARP Lynch's still cards. there. Okay, into their – Lane Staley's not there. Oh, my Scott gosh. Whelan's not there. It's on, they don't sound the same, bro. Okay, it's I can't like believe it. it's like it's like Van Halen without David Lee Roth. Come on, yeah. man. Uh, Van Hagar was still pretty damn good. <laughs> God, he still was, pretty damn. Still like Hacker and Amram. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I will always put Van Halen with DLR at the top. But Van Hagar was still pretty damn good. They definitely worked. <laughs> and listen, we're trying to get people to the concert, not uh, get people not to go. No, I mean, go have on. fun. My gosh, hey, go man. and have fun. I'm not saying yeah. that. Yeah. I think it's great. <laughs> It's not the same. <laughs> to personally, me personally, it's not the same thing. That's right. all. I got you. I got you. I got you. Coach Campo hanging with us the rest of the way. Uh, Coach, of course, is a man of many musical tastes. I'm not sure if Stone Temple Pilots <laughs> is one. That's of, not my wheelhouse. Not actually. in his wheelhouse. Have you yeah. ever heard it? See, until you oh, yeah, hear I've it. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. You've heard of him. All, all right. right. Yeah. yeah. He's hip. He's also a man who knows a thing or two about defense. And so as we discuss the news of the day, Coach Foya Lewican, three-year extension, And now what does this mean for the Jacksonville Jaguars defense moving forward? Obviously a commitment to the 28-year-old linebacker who has been with them the last two years, led the NFL in tackles, solo tackles the last three years. For me, I looked at this as it's stability within the interior of your defensive line, as Leon has said time and time again, including multiple times on today's program, you need to build that identity from the inside out. Inside linebacker may not be along the front, but it's inside. Right. My question for you is, do you believe this is also signaling more 4-3 fronts from Ryan Nielsen this season? Well, first of all, I, I think you've heard, uh, of course, you weren't here last week. But really, I, yeah, to be I've honest with you, they're yeah. a 4-2-5. Four t- a 4-2-5. Yeah, and, and because nickel is big in their package, whether it's a big nickel, a regular nickel, whatever it is, based on down and distance. Uh, what I've seen from them, and again, I, 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 honestly, I don't know what they're going to do. But looking at them, I've, I've had an opportunity to watch Atlanta quite a bit. And uh, it, it looks like when they when an offense has base personnel in there, which I'm talking about a fullback, a running back, one tight end, two wide outs, mm-hmm. or two tight ends, one back, two wide outs, uh, there's an, uh, if it's a run situation, they're putting a defensive tackle in the game for the nickel. Okay, so they're replacing in reverse of what you normally do. Rather than bringing the nickel in, they're, they've got the nickel, and then they're, they're substituting for him. The nickel is almost playing that third linebacker Right, and spot. the one thing I can't tell is because I haven't really zeroed in on the numbers yet, I'm not sure if they're bringing a defensive tackle in 
or whether or not they're kicking the big end because they've got a big end and a stand-up end right. and two interior linemen. I'm not sure if they're kicking the that big end down, which they would do with, with, Walker. with Walker. If they have another guy to bring in, they bring in an extra rush linebacker. Now, I, like I, let's I say would, they draft Latu. Yeah, and exactly. Latu or comes Jared in, Burks. That guy. But that's what they would do. Right. Okay, and then as soon as – you know, there's a lot of teams, when they go two tight ends, two wides, and one back, it's not necessarily a run situation, or it's second and seven, or something like that. Then they'll put the nickel in there and play nickel against that, and the three wides, and the four wides. So, to me, having a Lewican, his role doesn't change, really, from what he had this year, except that he's going to be covered up a little bit more to be able to run as opposed to having to take on a guard or, or whatever. And, and when, when Coach says covered up, people need to understand it. You can explain it again. Is it covered up means he's freed up. Yeah, okay? there's a guy in front so of him so in like, that gap. There's more bodies in front of him, Correct. so therefore he's yeah. more Correct. free to run. And, and, and that's what Foye wants more than anything right. else right. because he – and this goes back to what you said earlier. Instead of tackling a running back five yards past the line of scrimmage, if these guys do their job up front, which he, they, they need to do their job up he's front. He's attacking the line exactly. of scrimmage now. At, at, in, in Plus, also explain when they, have, when they have three safeties on the field, so Savage, if they go – if all of a sudden teams go to, to one personnel or ten, 11 personnel or 10 personnel, you're bringing your corner in then. Savage isn't, isn't playing man up on a receiver. That I don't know. Because, you wouldn't, because I guess is you wouldn't think, right? No, I would think of him as a big nickel. Right. Mm-hmm. They may call it three safeties. Right. Mm-hmm. They right. may but, call but, it the but, star but, position right. like yeah. some college Exa- teams. Exactly. Right. But the, they but may the, be, he may be in there in certain situations, and then they may have a corner that comes in if it's a third and – 12, 11, 10, and you, and you, you want to – Right, have, comes in for uh, him. Which, which would, wide which would then there. be considered they would probably call it a dime package at that point. Yeah, what, right. however they call right. it. Right, And see, to me, I go back to – I mentioned earlier with the Cowboys, we had really small linebackers, but we had eight defensive linemen that could play. And part of that is not only being physical at the line of scrimmage, but the linebackers knowing for sure – that the gaps that those guys are responsible for up front are covered, which in the last couple ball games, that wasn't the case last year. And And Aluakim was having to point it out. Yeah, and he was trying to set guys up where they're supposed to be. Not just Devin Lloyd. No, uh, gap control, everything. And so to me, that's as big a deal as it is. Now, bringing in a guy like Eric Armstead, that's a great move. If, If Hamilton is 100%, hey, there's a reason they gave him the contract mm-hmm. because they think he's a nose guard that can, that can physically handle up front. Hopefully he's going to be ready to do that. Right. And then Roy Robinson Harris is a guy that we, you know can still play. Yep. Uh, you and, need uh, rotation. and that's abs- Absolutely. And that's Keep what, people fresh. Right, and that's the point I've been making with especially mock draft season around the corner. I expect the Jaguars to draft defensive linemen, edge rushers, within their first four to five picks, right? if not multiple. Because when you look at what Ryan Nielsen had in New Orleans, you look at what he had in Atlanta, it's multiple guys that can get to the quarterback. And then on top of that, you have a situation like Caden Ellis, who played inside linebacker in, or off-ball linebacker in college, a little bit more inside right. in the National Football League. He's scheming him up yeah, for exactly. multiple sacks. Exactly. And so, that, and so that's where – Really, when you look at third down – that's where they made their money in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. They were 31% or something on third down. If you watch their first and That's second That's really down, good. Yeah, if you watch their first and second down, there's some teams that ran on them a little bit. You know, I mean, you know, they were four yards a carry. Which, this team ran on them yeah, in London. exactly. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does in that early package because – the late package, I think, is going to be pretty good because I think he knows how to attack protections and do those kind of things. I, I saw more guys free with them to the quarterback than I did with our group here for the last two years. Really? Yes. On third down. No, I'm talking about third down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, those are money downs. Yeah. Okay? We're never, ever going to get away from that. You right. either keep the ball or you, or you, or you can't uh, get the ball back. Absolutely. Those are the two money downs for sure. Not to uh, spoil the first edition of Mia's Mock Draft Mondays forthcoming this Monday, but 
an interesting stat as I was writing this last night, Coach. The Atlanta Falcons had 10 players on their defense with two or more sacks last year. The Jacksonville Jaguars had five, and that included the 17 and a half from Josh Allen and the 10 from Trayvon Walker. Yep. Yeah. I mean, oh. Look, like spreading the wealth is one thing, but getting so many guys involved so that the quarterback and the offensive line don't know where the pressure is coming from, that's the next level stuff that Absolutely. we need to start thinking about here in this town. No yeah. question. And, and you know what? I'm kind of interested to see this Gibson guy. Play. Oh, Travis, Travis Gibson, yeah. yes, yeah. outside because, linebacker. Because yeah. I'll tell you what. He was uh, a guy that we thought maybe last year because of the ties to Bill Shuey there may have been interest. Uh, yeah, well, they still got Bill Shuey. So right, and he's and, still and, here. Yep. And the guys have told me that he's a pretty good player. Now, he's averaged, I think, four sacks a year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you're going to bring a guy in and get 12 or 13 sacks. But, you know, you can use a guy like that if, for in fact, they're kicking uh, – uh, you know, on third down, if they're kicking down uh, Walker mm -hmm. into the interior, you, you have to have somebody else that's going to stand up outside and, and do it. And so Travis we'll Gibson see. had seven sacks the last time Bill Shuey was his outside linebacker's there you go. coach. There you so go. file yeah. that one away, folks. Yep. Two more segments to go. We are live at Players Grill in Mandarin where the neighborhood meets. So many of you have stopped by. We appreciate you swinging through on a big hair heavy metal Friday edition of XL Primetime. We are here until 3. Stop on by and say hi. Buckle up. You're in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios with XL Primetime on 1010XL. Find your new Honda at your eight local Honda dealers. They call him Fat Tony, but he's not really fat. Zero percent body fat. But it's a really big show. I couldn't have said it better myself. Jaguars today. Big it don't make no difference. 10 to noon on 1010XL. At Randy Marion Cadillac in Jacksonville, we have over 40 2024 all-electric Cadillac lyrics in stock. Take advantage today of two awesome incentives. First, a $7,500 rebate applied to the purchase price directly at sign. That's a $7,500 rebate with no need to wait for tax time. And second, a $1,500 credit for a high-speed in-home charger. Over $9,000 in savings. Now's the time to drive away in luxury in a brand new all-electric Cadillac lyric. Randy Marion Cadillac, Southside Boulevard, Jacksonville, plus tax tech title 899 admin fee and resist all. Tell them Jennifer sent ya. Mia here, and if you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, at the nonstop action of the madness with MyBookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit, all the way up to a thousand bucks. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. The best part about my bookie? You can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today. Only my bookie. Have you or someone you care about been arrested or had their driver's license taken away? I'm Susan Cohen and I work with David Robbins at the law firm of Epstein and Robbins. We are experienced fighters for those charged with DUI and all criminal offenses. I've been named the best DUI attorney in the state and David has been named the best criminal defense lawyer in Jacksonville. In your battle with the justice system, there is only one thing you need to know. Dial David 24-7 at Epstein and Robbins. 354-5645. Did you know Prime Roofing manufactures, fabricates, and installs their metal roofs? If you're thinking about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Schedule an estimate today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Stay connected to Gainesville with a Florida Gator Report. Join me, Taylor Dahl, as I keep a close eye on everything that happens in Gator Nation. Brought to you by Darley's Plumbing, where quality counts on 1010XL. Dash is not only your Jaguars game day stop, but a great place to grab a meal any day of the week. To honor the Jags and the fans, we've crafted the Duval Sub. The Duval comes with freshly sliced turkey, ham, melted cheddar, and habanero jack cheese topped with crisp lettuce, fresh tomatoes, and a double portion of our secret sauce, all served on a fresh roll. Come by your local's Daily's Dash today to get your delicious Duval Sub. Daily's is the official convenience store sponsor of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
We don't have too many cold nights on the first coast, but when the temperature drops, you want to hit the heat button and warm up. That's where Florida Home comes in. They're the AC experts in Jacksonville, and the importance of keeping your heating system in good working order is really important. If it stops working when it gets cooler, Florida Home will leap into action and provide you with the best solution. Heater and heat pump repair service and new system installation. They do it all. Just call Florida Home AC at 777-4300, the official heating and AC partner of the Jaguar. Need protection? Call Craig and Christine Kaprosky at Goosehead Insurance. The Kaprosky's are a husband and wife team committed to finding you the right coverage at the right price in just a few short minutes. For home, auto, flood, or specialty insurance, Craig and Christine Kaprosky are the answer. Craig.Kaprosky at Goosehead.com. Electrical problems? Call American Electrical Contracting. 737-7770. Small jobs or large, they do them all. Work with a locally owned and operated company that will wire it right at a fair price. It's not just a slogan, it's the way they do business. Wondering what you're going to do for dinner tonight? Southern Steer Butcher is a full-service butcher that offers take-and-bake side options that are oven-ready. Now open in Ortega. For tasty tips and juicy breasts, choose Southern Steer Butcher. Staying active no matter what your age is key to living life at its fullest. And Rebound Rehabilitation wants you to know they can get you back up to speed and back in the game pain-free. Rebound Rehabilitation with eight locations across the First Coast, top-of-the-line therapists ready to assist you from neck and back pain, knee or foot pain. They can help. Excellent patient care combined with the highest quality and rehabilitation services. Look for a Rebound Rehab location near you and get back in the game. Log on. ReboundRehab.com. Have you tried golfing at the Improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, I'll tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Tap House. Now, go to the website, that is CimarronGolfClub.com, and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program, and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. Need cash? Beaches Jewelry and Pawn has cash available. Ready to buy guitars, surfboards, jewelry, firearms, tools, and especially gold. They need it all. Selling or pawning, get cash on the spot at Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jacksonville Beach. Tone 10XL is presented by Barra and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Wrapping up our show, we are close to handing it off to Rick Blue, Lauren Brooks. They had a great conversation with Phil Sims yesterday talking about this football team. Uh, definitely some good stuff that he had to say. Uh, before we're done, we got to touch on these games tonight. Uh, do we have any upsets that are out there? NC State, uh, I, I love watching what the, Wolf, the big man, of course, yeah. uh, what the Wolfpack has been able to do. Uh, and Marquette. Stress just a little bit with that uh, round of 32 game. Gonzaga playing better than I thought. Uh, Purdue is a five-point pick. Houston giving up four to Duke. We know that Duke certainly is capable of getting on a run. They scored a bunch of points uh, as they closed out the Dukes uh, of James Madison. Uh, and then Creighton is catching three against the Tennessee Volunteers. Anyone got an upset out there? Oh, I absolutely yeah. on the DJ Burns yeah. train, yeah. baby. Yeah. So you I, love I, that. I'm getting the vibes of that Jim Valvano 1983. It's a good little run. It's a good little story. It's and look, I, it's low hanging fruit because yeah. it's the same university. Well, yeah, they're, but they're the only double digit seed that's obviously made it into the Sweet 16. There's a lot more chalk that turned that came through the first couple of rounds this year, but they are good enough. They're an 11 seed, but they're still a the best one, part one of the is like programs. the the tournament selection committee just stumbled into this. Yeah, that they're going to play Houston in the region final. Yeah, right. which is which, which is, is the same thing as Valvano. Yeah. Eighty-three. That yeah. might have been one of the greatest college teams ever to not win. Maybe the greatest college team. Yeah, ever five and one of Jamma. the greatest national title games we've ever mm-hmm. had. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they've made movies about oh, it yeah. for a reason and documentaries. I I think what will be fascinating in that matchup. Look, uh, full transparency, I put Tyler Kolick on my first-team All-American list with the mm-hmm. AP. Yeah, and um, and he him is, being healthy for Marquette's huge. He, they look like a different outfit when they have him. But the fact that Shaka Smart was near tears before Tyler even came over for that post-game interview at the round of 32, there was some – I don't want to say it was a mental well, roadblock, but yeah. clearly there was something was there not coach. And you could speak to it from a coaching standpoint. They were very worried about if they didn't get over the hump 
of the round of 32. They would never get over the hump. And so I'm going to be very curious tonight if Marquette's going to play free and easy because they feel like at least we made it to the Sweet 16 or saying at least we made it to the Sweet 16, maybe they sit back a little bit. Well, I, I, I think they're a good ball club. I, I th Listen, when you get to this point right now, it comes down to one or two plays in a game. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to see – I don't think you're going to see any blowouts. I think any team can win at this point. And I think the perfect example – I watched Alabama twice this year yeah. lose to Florida. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think Florida's pretty good now, yeah. but uh, the, I didn't think they were going to get by North Carolina. You know I mean? But that's the, March the Madness. Tallest, the tallest forest ranger I have ever seen yeah. named Grant Nelson yeah. won that basketball game right. for them last right. night. And a little I said, comb over at age 20, whatever. North Carolina, you could argue, also <laughs> lost that game because Hubert yeah. Davis oh, yeah. gets away. He tried a new lineup. Well, in the well, second half of a two-possession ball yeah. game in the Sweet 16. And to take that shot, you know, I think the kid would like to bring it back, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, yeah. the one he missed, you know, the three-pointer. But well, it, It's so funny because there's growing pains with Duke and North Carolina that maybe is in, 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 in some ways why the ACC is – not looked at the same way because there's not a Roy Williams, there's not a Mike Shashevsky, whatever. These are pretty good coaches, and yep. they have done well with their teams. When, when it's all said and done, the Tar Heels just lost by a bucket. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I, I don't yeah. think you guys are underselling Alabama. Alabama yeah. played a great game. They did. Yeah. Alabama's got some really good players, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not underselling them. I'm just impressed by what they were able to do. I, di I had Alabama winning. I had them moving on in the bracket. But I'm still surprised that it happened because the first two games I saw from UNC made me think, wait a minute, maybe I'm wrong here. That but was your, that was your uh, opposite. Oh, yeah. Go Abo Joe. Abo Joe. Joe. Abo Joe. Yeah. You're good at that. Yeah. You're better at that than picking the actual winner. <laughs> you better winner. believe it. And by the way, Coach, you know what? I won last night as far as I'm concerned because I didn't bet on those games. So I'm a winner. <laughs> to your point, Coach, about no blowouts, I do want to hit you with a saucy nug before we get ready to hand it off to the Frangie Show. UConn, 30-point victory last night yeah. over San Diego State. Yeah. Close game in the first half, oh to be gosh. sure. But they pull away in the second half. They are the first defending champion to reach the Elite Eight since Florida in 2007, who, of course, won the national title again. Just saucy remember nugs. that if we talk about – yeah, we talk about – this is a saucy dog. Isn't that – that's uh, 2007? That's 17 it's, years. Yeah, it's it's 17 years. We talk all about, you know, how difficult it is to go back-to-back -back at anything. Yeah. You know, and that's where, you know, it's a difficult – and especially in basketball, I would think. They change the whole they roster. Change, oh, yeah. The whole roster changes. Florida over didn't over in 06 yeah. 07. Yes. It's right. an entirely new team. Well, well, I, Florida I, fans like the 72 yeah. Dolphin fans? Well, I was going to say, I, I want to know who the Mercury Morris is of the team. Like if Joe Kim Noah's going right. to pop up on social, he said, hey, hey, you might be in our neighborhood, <laughs> but let me know when you're on our street. Yeah. Or if okay. UConn loses, is he going to like spark up a fat one on IG? Yeah, and just yeah, say, big old bottle of uh, Dom Perignon and, 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 a, and a big stogie, a big stick. Uh, but. That is special stuff that they had back-to-back. -back. And, yes, all those guys came back. Right. Uh, the 04s, they returned, and that was such a big thing uh, that they were able to do. So, yeah, UConn's doing something special. And by the way, UConn is probably as disrespected a, a, a college basketball program as there is out there. We mentioned the Kansases, right. Dukes, That's Carolinas, true. Kentuckys. You know, throw UConn in this conversation yeah. – and, throw, the, throw the head coach into that. Yeah, and by the two. way, they've won these last handful of national three championships with three different coaches. Yeah. They've, won, so, they've won more national championships than any basketball team in the last, what, 40, 50 years? Well, yeah, at the yeah. very least the 21st yeah. century. So, Five. Yeah, so it's it's something what they're doing. Uh, and that's, you know, the great Jim Calhoun to yep. Ollie to, yep. to Dan. Uh, yeah, And then you look at sure. the women. You look at the women, they're well, doing they the make, same thing, basically. But you know what they do? I think they might take those headlines away because there are, people are uconn out. Out, that they right. even ignore what the basket, what the men's team has done, and yeah. it's a help for UConn yeah. that they're playing the Sweet 16 in Portland. Oh. So oh, yeah. I, I think they're, they were, they're getting yeah. far away. They don't have to play within. Historically speaking, when yeah. they were winning national right. titles, right. usually the Sweet 16 was close to stores. It was somewhere in the Northeast, so that was only yeah. fueling the fire, fueling the narrative. Well, I'm so. a Kansas yeah. fan, but I uh, I'm a Connecticut guy at heart. Yeah, you so. are. You're a Connecticut kid. Yep. All right, we are wrapping it up from the Players Grill Man Room where this neighborhood meets. We'll say hello to the Francis Show with Rick Blue and Lauren Brooks coming up next. Cruising with XL Prime Time in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL.
Get Florida Gators play-by-play on 1010XL. It's a weekend of Easter baseball in the swamp. Florida, Mississippi State. Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday at 1 on 1010 AM. Right now, say big at Key Buick GMC, like up to 15000 off all new GMC trucks or choose 9000 in savings with 2.9 APR financing for up to 72 months. Need some low APR rates? Key Buick GMC has them. Rates as low as 1.9% for 36 months, 3.9% for 48 months, 4.9% for up to 60 months, and 5.9% APR for up to 72 months. Across the street from Tinseltown, Key Buick GMC. Top Dog Tavern is your gathering place for family and friends, offering something for everyone. Want a delicious meal served with a smile? We have you covered. Shareable appetizers, hot and crispy wings, juicy tavern burgers, fresh salads, plus a large craft beer selection. And there is nowhere better to watch all the big games than on our multiple TVs. Enjoy great food, cold drinks, and good times at Top Dog Tavern, located in Bartram Park off Old St. Augustine Road. Are you 18 years or older, just got married, just got divorced, or have children? Listen up. Have you done your last will and estate planning? You have questions, call Matt Hinson with the Hinson Law Firm. Reach him at 527-1700, offices Jacksonville, Florida, and don't let the state decide your fate. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation. Light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. Sometimes you agree with him, sometimes you don't. On the runway, I'm coming in hot. CBS Sports senior NFL writer Pete Prisco joins the Frangie Show Friday afternoons on 1010XL. Brought to you by Showtime Sports Cards and Collectibles. Warm weather means the beach, fishing, golf, and more. Make sure to drop into Dales and grab a cold case to go. From Bud Light to their seltzer, from Mick Ultra to Modelo, or your favorite crafts like Old City or Sweetwater. Grab and go at your local Dales. Hey, sports fans, this is Hayes Carlion for QC Kinetics. This is the time of year to enjoy life. Stop letting that pain in your joints keep you from doing what you love to do this spring. Call QC Kinetics now. Set up a free consultation. Call them at 904-274-5522. They've got two great locations, Mandarin and Ponte Vedra Beach. Go see them. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in regenerative medicine. I'm talking lasting joint pain relief with no surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. It's a fact, QC Kinetics is literally transforming lives. Their advanced treatments harness your own body's ability to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. Pro athletes have been doing this for decades, but now this life-changing treatment is available for you. So you can walk and run and climb stairs and play golf and move again pain-free. 904-274-5522. That's QC Kinetics. Call them today. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball presented by FIS opens today at 121 Financial Ballpark. Come early for the opening day street carnival and don't miss post-game fireworks. Tomorrow, the first 2,000 fans get a free t-shirt plus more fireworks. Then join us for Baptist Health Sunday Family Fun Day with a pre-game egg hunt. Tickets start at just five bucks, jackshrimp.com. Jumbo Shrimp Baseball, affordable, family fun. The 2024 NFL season is approaching fast, and the Jaguars are celebrating their 30th season. Be at the bank for all the big plays and big moments of this milestone year by locking in your season tickets now. With packages for every budget and exclusive perks throughout the season, there's no better time to become a season ticket member. Be at the bank for every touchdown and secure your seats by going to jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000 today. We'll see you at the bank. This is Hayes Carline for Skylife Elite. Are you tired of canceled flights, unruly passengers, and layovers? Call my friends at Skylife Elite. Consider using private charter flights for your next adventure. Yes, you can afford it. Make your own schedule. Fly direct. Drive your car to Craig Airport and get directly on the plane. Skylife Elite can make that happen. Call 490-9332, go to flyskylife.com, and find them on social media. Fly Skylife Elite, North Florida's premier private air charter. 
1010XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. We hand it off from XL Primetime here at Players Grow Mandarin. Lauren Brooks joins us now as you guys are getting ready to go. You and Rick Ballou, what's happening? Oh, just hanging out, but we don't have any pickles here in the studio. Yeah, Leon got a hold of some fried pickles today, and that's just one of his staples. That's 100% yeah, his staple. If, if he's ordering a side, one of the first things it's he does pickles. is, um, I'll take some pickles. <laughs> he loves them. I, I love loves fried them. okra, but I'm not the biggest fried pickle fan. I don't know why that is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I let him devour them. I, I, but he, he's <laughs> a sides man. Way. Yeah, he, he is, is a sides, a sides man. man. There's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. who doesn't all love right, sides? So. That's where all the good fat comes in. Right. Yeah, exactly. Good apps, good sides, got to have them. All right, what's going on this afternoon? Yeah, so Rick and I, one more day together. Obviously, Frank and Hayes will be back next week. We have Matt Paulus from JY checking in at 340. We're going to talk all about shoulders. We've got Prisco coming up to talk all things NFL at 4 o'clock, and then Herm Edwards is going to join us at 440. And, gentlemen, uh, how are your brackets? Still looking good? I'm hanging in there at the very least. I, I feel like I lost one of my Final Four teams with hey, Arizona. I, I got Purdue and Illinois playing the championship game, so I'm mm-hmm. still well alive. You are okay. all You're Big Ten? <laughs> I do. Wow, yeah. I did not realize That's a that. choice. Well, Rick had Iowa State coming. winning it all, so I'm <laughs> sure that – Oh, he did? Yeah, I'm sure that last night was a little bit of a dagger for him. Yeah, I, I had Iowa State going up against UConn. I have UConn and Houston, and uh, I have Creighton been. still alive. It's my Final Four team, right. so we'll see how it goes. All UConn, right. Illinois. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. I think, yeah. I, well, Arizona I lost. That's the one I lost, Kentucky too. I lost. But Purdue and UConn, listen, if you back mm-hmm. 50% in this thing, you're doing okay. Yeah, I lost Kentucky and Baylor, so. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right, we'll – See how those brackets go this afternoon, and uh, we will be listening. Yep, y'all have a great Easter weekend. All right, Thanks you too. You Happy on. Easter. That's right. Happy Easter, everybody out there, uh, because we got to get out. But we'll remind everybody: Players Grow Mandarin tonight. Claire Vandiver, the she'll be performing at eight o'clock tonight, uh, and then the band be easy to, uh, next Friday night. And they've opened up their Thursday nights with a little music bingo starting Thursday, April fourth. So you guys can enjoy all sorts of things here. And, like uh, we all should say, happy Easter. Carve some ham, find some eggs. Remember, uh, he is risen, all that stuff. However right. you celebrate it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we enjoy it. We'll celebrate our Friday afternoon with our anthem as we head out. Uh, Joe C., Mia O'Brien, Matty Hayes, Big Cersei, and Coach Campo. Thanks to John Party here for holding it down. And then, of course, J.J. Vilt, we send it back to you. Come on, Joe. That ain't good enough. Gotta set the blood out my mouth. Let's go, baby. Whoa! You're riding in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios. XL Primetime on 1010XL. Long ago, sports radio was just a dream. But one brave station dared to make the leap into sports outer space. Lift off. 1010XL. That's one small step for man. Out of this world. At Honda, we appreciate all the comparisons to other vehicles. And no matter how many times they compare their vehicles to a Honda, only a Honda is a Honda. Remember, value, quality, safety. There is no substitute. Visit your local Honda dealer now.